Lee Matthews, welcome to the MCG. A big football weekend here at this ground with three great matches, starting with this tonight. And I think I'll be at all of them. <laughs> Good on you, Lee. Lee, coaches, things that can come back to bite them. Let's have a look at this quote from Robert Walls. Late last year when he was writing for The Age and coaching Brisbane, Adelaide has too many hometown heroes who are too easily satisfied. A hardcore players who have been there several seasons seem to be content to be involved, not mad dog desperate to succeed. With the advent of Port, perhaps their egos will be checked and they can knuckle down to some fair dinkum football. It's been used against him this week in <laughs> Adelaide. Well, it's fairly harsh stuff, fairly general too. It'd be nice to know if there was a few names uh, alongside those comments, but uh, well, they've taken plenty of stick, the Crow, so I think you're almost used to that, aren't they? He was on Talking Footy on Monday Night, Robert Walls, and we yeah. asked him, Lee, how he was going about approaching tonight's match. I think it's uh, I think it's really important that if you play them in Melbourne that you get off to a good start. Uh, so you put the uh, the seeds of doubt in early. I think that's vital that you get off to a good start. What do you think about that? Well, there's no doubt, but I think every game, every match, every year you've got to try and get a good start. But uh, well, the Crows got the start against Hawthorne last week, got a big lead and still got run down. Uh, but they're much better at the MCG. I've seen them play some good footy here at the MCG, so I think they're much more comfortable here than anywhere else in Melbourne. Nathan Bauer back in the team tonight for uh, Richmond. A bit of pace there. Paul Bullets, unfortunately, out with a broken hand. Do you yeah, like their lineup? Yeah, starting to find a bit of form. I mean, I've been pretty keen on Richmond the last 12 months, but they're struggling a little bit, but the last month they're getting somewhere. I think Wayne came, Campbell now playing out of defence. That's been a good move for them. Darren Gasper, I think, is doing pretty well. He's likely to take Tony Modra, one would suspect. Uh, certainly Matthew Knight, they'd love him back. Nick Daffy playing well again and Matthew Richardson. Uh, they're quite a uh, useful team, I think. And uh, certainly the side outside the eight with the most chance, I think, of getting in. A few changes for the Crows tonight with some experience coming back with Hodges, McGuinness and McDermott. Look, Robert Walls went on to say also about the Crows that he felt that they had a, a sharp end at the top but perhaps maybe not the depth. This is his quote again from Talking Footy. I think that uh, with Adelaide you probably look at their top four or five players and, and really focus in on them and make sure that they don't have good starts to the game because I think they've got four or five players who mean a, a heck of a lot to them. I would imagine, Lee, that uh, one of them, uh, Robert was talking about, was Darren Jarman. He's not here tonight. His brother Andrew is. Well, I would suspect so. I suspect he's talking about the two Jarmans. I think a, mate, a guy like Nigel Smart, who can be very good, a great running halfback at times, but sometimes falls away. Um, who else we got there? Ricudo, Hart. I think it's interesting that Tony McGuinness is back in the team because they really need some ball carrying ability, and that's what McGuinness uh, provides better than most. And I think Chris McDermott, he's a hard man, and I think maybe just that. Uh, attitude within the uh, team is going to be something the Crows will help them as well. You feel smart's particularly important, don't you? What about these leagues so. that the Crows have been able to establish in Melbourne over a period of time? We've picked four out, two from this season, admittedly early in matches against Hawthorne and yes. Collingwood when they led by 39 and 24. Carlton last year they led by nearly five and lost by five, and the famous one in 1993 at this ground. Yeah, well we're going back away for that one, but certainly last week, that's the immediate history, and 39 points up in the second quarter and then you get run down. That's really something that is very disturbing. Uh, but yeah, well, it's, uh, as we say, the Crows have been up and down within games and from week to week, and that really is something they've got to overcome. Lee, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. It's a lot of atmosphere. The Tigers have tremendous support in this city, and the Crows need this one badly. It's a game for the finals, you'd reckon. Pittman went early. Deer touched the football. A Richmond player, Broderick, was flattened in the centre square, and now held up and held up hard. As the Tigers come charging in, there's lip tack and another bounce. There is a bit of feeling early. You'd expect it. Why not? They'll be tense, these players. Big punch by Deer the second time. Charles Led missed it. Lip tack, Rogers, well done to Miranda. to kick the first on the left. Can't quite get it back. And Smart bangs it through from behind. Robert Shaw said a fortnight ago in Talking Footy that Smart would get the job on Richardson. He's true to his word. There's the Tiger bench. Look at Ben Moore, the kid in the foreground. I saw him play his first game last week when he came on very late. Jarman's to kick the ball back in. Gets it to the centre square. Pittman in the centre. Jarman gets a touch. Hurled up McDermott. Crashes through Robbo and kicks to half forward. Yes, a wobbly punt kick. Bounces awkwardly. Chance for McGuinness. Nearly taken down by Tate. Ben Hart. Just gets his left foot to it, taken by Brendan Gale. Richmond may have something moving out there on the far wing. But look at McGuinness, running nicely. Not impeded by that knee injury. Lip tap. 
but taken away by Michael Gale. Round on his right foot, he keeps the ball inside the field of play. It's gathered by Bond, away to Nigel Smart. The hand pass is pretty slick to Ben Hart. Ben Hart's kick goes down the wing. It bounces in front of the players there. Matthew Rockburn couldn't control it. His immediate opponent at this stage looks as though it's Brendan Gale. It's out of bounds on centre wing. Lee picked up in any matchups as we look at the uh, Crows bench. With well, the... Gasper is back on Modra as we suggested, and as you uh, said, Bruce Smart is on Richards in the midfield, just sorting itself out. Bond looks like he might have Andrew Jarman. We saw uh, Ellen and McLeod a moment ago on the interchange. Connell kicks the ball high, or oh, good take. That's a terrific mark at the back of the tides. The Jamie Tate, fine player that he is, he's going to have to come back. He marked that like a tall player, didn't he? It's a fair, some of, there's just a few players in the competition, those half-back flankers who take the third up, marks quite regularly. Glenn Arch is one, Tape's another, um, you know, those kind of players, Christo, Mackay, those guys when they're playing. and uh, They back themselves and they succeed most of the time. Nobody behind him, by the way. A vacant uh, 50 metre for Adelaide, Tape kicks to centre wing, Charles worked to the front, McDermott pushed the ball forward, Rashido to Andrew Jarman. Onto his left, normally a terrific kick, not that time. Prescott got hold of it at centre wing, goes long. Richardson didn't go. Front spot, Ben Holland, terrific take though at the back by the Crows. And away they go through Collins, and he kicks the ball to Jamison. Jamison. Good kick by that player, but it bounces awkwardly again. Very difficult to gather those kicks. This is Miranda. His second possession, the first one not all that good. This kick to half forward, strong mark, a really strong mark. Justin Charles having plenty to say at the opening bounce to Andrew Jarman. He goes for goal. The long kick will land in the square. Matthew Richardson, two on one. Chalmers and Smart. Connell gets it back. Chalmers dispossessed there by Naish. Still in Richmond's full forward area. Daffy tackled by Smart. Looks for the free kick. Not forthcoming. It spills out now. Naish gets his right foot to it and kicks it over on the full. The free kick for Adelaide in the left back pocket to be taken by Matt Connell. Connell's kick is pretty good. And he finds further afield as Mark Rashudo. One of the hard men of the Adelaide Crows, Mark Rashudo. Just a young man, but he plays with plenty of passion. The kick into the centre of the ground. The high flyer couldn't take the mark. Chance there for Broderick. He's reasonably well tackled. So was Tape tackled well by Ben Hart. The ball spills to lip tack. The hand pass to McGuinness. McGuinness outside 50. And gave his forward a real chance. It was Hodges. He beat Payne. Was that a mark? Questionable one, but Scott Hodges, his confidence will lift as a result of this chance to get the first goal of the game. It's obviously very important for Scott Hodges. How many times have Hodges and uh, Modra started on the full forward line for the Crows? And basically that setup's failed. So uh, very important for the future of Scott Hodges. Well, he's been a pretty reliable kick. He's kicked something like 60 goals in South Australian Football League competition this year. The kick is close. Very close. A goal. First goal of the game, kicked by Scott Hodges, and Adelaide lead by five points. And I think that's what you need. Uh, he had a chance, Hodges moved into position and took the mark, but the accurate conversion, I think, is critical from 30 metres, just to get your confidence up. Uh, have one shot for goal and you get one goal on the board. It's amazing what it does for the morale of uh, the individual and, of course, the team as well. Crows by five points. Hodges, the goal scorer. Pittman Deer again, McDermott, Bond's quick kick, it was a cool play on Prescott, has been impressive this season, he was terrific last week, gives to Rogers. Rogers poor kick may come off though, Miranda kept his eye on it, good mark, getting some touches early on young Collins, it's his third possession, he's at uh, 52 metres, can kick a fair way, gives that all he's got, it's going to go right there, Chalmers, and comes off Charles for behind. So another rush behind to the Tigers. Narinda going forward twice and the ball being rushed through. So it's two to six. Chalmers to bring it back in. It's going to go for distance and uh, it's not a bad kick. 
Gets it about 65 metres away. Deer again getting his hands on the football. Broderick, Jarman, well tackled. And then kicks the ball off the ground forward. Ben Hart attacks. Robin at, uh, and Gale again playing in defence. Ricochets off lip tack. Jarman in pretty hard there. Campbell, well done. Ben Hart to Rashido. Bit slow. Goes to full forward. Caven in the pocket. Now Hodges, I should say, out of play. Crows left forward pocket attacking. Hodges back first time this season, as Robbo said, in good form for Port Adelaide this year. And his strike rate at the Crows isn't bad either. 90-odd goals in 30-odd matches. He goes at about three a match. There's David Pittman doing the ruck work up against Greg Deer. Still players uh, just searching each other out. And underneath all that, Broderick. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, isn't that a familiar sight? Chris McDermott in an Adelaide Crows jumper on the bottom of the pack. It's great to see him back. In the forward pocket for the Crows, only 20 metres from goal. Pittman gets the front posse. The, the favours Campbell. He slips the tackle, gets the kick away. Now the chance for Prescott. Just able to keep it in. Handball over the top. Will set Rogers up. If it bounces nicely, it does. Rogers goes in towards half forward. Richardson in front. Couldn't take the mark. The ball spills to the back. Gathered by Bond. Not a bad hand pass, Jamison stood, smart, maybe took his eyes off it, tackled by Nash, ball spills, still there at half forward, chance for Campbell overruns it, Nash goes in again, and the ball is locked up between the centre and centre half forward position for Richmond, 53 metres from the Tiger goal. Mark Bickley. 11 at the moment, it's going to get down to about 8, so it will be a brisk night, we've had beautiful weather in Melbourne the last couple of days, Deer again trying to force forward, Broderick's handball missed its target. Bickley, well done down low to Connell. Connell at half back measures the kick to centre wing. Robert made it. He accelerated on Gale and took the mark. Right in front of our commentary position here on Seven Sport. Robert again measures his kick. Pittman runs for him. Has some space now. An important delivery off the side. Going out of bounds would be his best option now. Gee, close. No, kept in by Burke to Campbell. To Deer, Deer at half back. He goes wide to centre wing, working to the front. Charles, good mark. So Pittman's poor delivery may pay here against the Crows. Charles runs away from McCartney, kicks to Richardson, had a fair bit of it. Nash, usually clever, measures his kick to a centre half forward, wants a good bounce. Young Collins, Miranda with him. Smart gave it away in a hurry. Taken by Rashudo at half back and stirring footy early to centre wing. Deer well on top of Pittman, I think, early days and runs away onto the left. Well done by Greg Deer. He's kicked the half forward, should be marked this time, and it is by Matthew Richardson. He's had an interesting battle in the early part of this game with Nigel Smart. Smart's defensive work has been good. But Matthew Richardson has the football 50 metres from goal. It's a thumping kick. A magnificent kick by Richardson. It could be through for a goal to the Tigers. What an absolutely fantastic kick by Matthew Richardson. Richmond 1 2 lead Adelaide a goal. Yes, it's tough to be able to kick accurately from 50 metres, and that's what Richardson done. But I must say, the uh, Shepherd on the goal line was pretty aggressive. I, uh, I think Adelaide may have been a fraction stiff here if we uh, eventually have a look at it. Uh, we may not, but certainly Richardson's pace, as always, is going to roll the player even as quick as smart. So the bounce back in the middle. Tigers have got their first goal on the scoreboard. Liptak had two goes at it, but Prescott, gee whiz, hasn't he done well in the opening minutes? Michael Gale, will it bounce up for him? It does, but he's run down by Bickley. Well done by Mark Bickley. Terrific stuff. But in goes Prescott again. Gale close to the line. May have lost a little bit of pace, but he hasn't lost that much of his courage. The ball to half forward. Spills to the ground and McGuinness to Jarman. His handball to Jamison on the up. Clever to Bond. Didn't waste any time. Kicked the ball to hurry. Ben Hart onto it. Needs the bounce. Gets it now. Can turn inside out on tape. Shocking kick. Nothing happening off that. Gave Rotman no hope. Gasper and Broderick did well. Broderick back to Gasper. These are important moments in the game. Gasper's kicked too far for Rogers. Bickley couldn't quite. He's been good early, Bickley. His hands to Jarman. Besieged. It's hard in the centre. Richmond put a strong tackle on. Too high. Close free kick. Bickley give it off. 
to Liptak. Liptak's hands over the top to Connell. Connell kicks through the pocket. Looking for Hodges. Can't break the tackle. Play on call. Right decision. Jamison in there with Gale. Out of play. Boundary throw in. 45 metres from the Adelaide goal. I think Hodges may have been held on to a little bit long after he did get rid of the ball. Yes, I think he's uh, a little bit stiff. He certainly was held after the tackle, but the uh, umpire allowed play to continue. Pittman front, Deer at the back. Pittman little toe poke. McDermott couldn't quite get hold of it. Ryan did kick the ball to centre wing. Miranda, Collins with him. Miranda just fell over, no free there. Jarman couldn't get a handle on it. Jamison and Broderick. It's very enjoyable early. The Crows are a goal and Richmond are one two. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about the desire of both sides to get at the football. And the odds indicating the Tigers it's pretty well. Sorry, Rob, I get there. The national sports book odds. Pretty well uh, hot favourites. Richmond. Tony McGuinness in picture. Richmond lead by two points. They've kicked the goal through Matthew Richardson. Adelaide's goal kicked by Scott Hodges. Just forward of centre wing in Adelaide's attacking half. Well done, Deer. Just moves it forward for the Tigers. Andrew Jarman does well to get it clear. Chance for Rogers. Hard at it again was McDermott. Ball spills, Rashudo tackled by Tate. Well done. Bond and Jarman. That's going to be an interesting battle as the night goes on. Chris Bond and Andrew Jarman. Bounce it right half forward for the Crows. Some 65 metres from their goal. Ten minutes left in the first quarter. Clear now through Broderick. Does well under pressure to keep it in. The kick to half forward, nearly taken by Justin Charles. Tries to finesse a little bit. Over the top there was McCartney. Oh, there's a free kick. Obvious. Justin Charles, take a kick. Now Jason McCartney, that is totally undisciplined. When kicks have been hard to get, Justin Charles will kick Richmond to half forward. Richardson in front, the ball spills, Miranda, he's been very, very productive across the half forward line. The kick towards full forward, taken by Chalmers. Away goes Bickley to Rashudo. Rashudo's kick will land near the wing. Deer and Pittman comes to ground, could take McGuinness. Needed Jarman to run, but he was held up by Bond. Back to McGuinness. He started promisingly, the captain. Gets distance at centre wing. Crows out of position, taped to the boundary line. A throw in. Runner out with McCartney, having a word to him. Settling him down. Dipper on the boundary line. Yeah, Bruce, just for the viewers at home, you can really hear the, bu the bumps and the clashes down here on the boundary line. Yeah, we can hear it up here too, Dipper. It's been a great start by both clubs. Both trying to find a way through early. Campbell just gave it up to Broderick cleverly. Then Michael Gale. He's handled it Bond. Will McCartney hit the shoulder but uh, took his eye off the footy. And Charles got hold of it and kicks to full forward. Holland's big mitts were in there. Nash couldn't quite get it. Then cleverly back to Daffy. He's good in this situation. High tackle free kick. A fearless go of Daffy. He and Nash between them were fantastic last week. Charles has been good, hasn't he? Kicked eight goals between them, the two little fellas, last week. Bickley at him a bit high. He can kick this, Staffy. He'll kick from 50. Gives it all he's got. Good for distance. Just that hook missing. Richmond, 1-3. Adelaide a goal. Justin Charles, four kicks and two marks. Playing across the half forward line. Chalmers to kick in, goes straight down the ground. It is a beautiful kick. Lands near to the centre. It'll go back though, Broderick went one way, then redirected with a long left foot kick into the goal square. It should be marked and it is by Nigel Smart. So the vision by Paul Broderick, not up to his usual standard there. Bond takes the short kick and then goes across the goal to centre half back where Connell has taken the mark. Connell can move it on. He just goes wider still. Chalmers has run all the way from kicking it in. He's kicked to half forward. Well, he's down near the wing, Matthew Robin, and he takes the mark in front of Brendan Gale. Took 10 marks last week against the Hawks. Oh, Andrew Jarman gets rid of his opponent. Tigers looking for a free kick. 
Broderick goes in again, tries to slip the handball, but uh, missed his target. Underneath all that was McDermott, and out goes McGuinness, like a little ferret. Got out of there somehow, kicks it towards the pocket. Modra and Gasper. Now the ball spills, spills. Jarman, over the top was Bond. Gee, the umpires are really asking the players to clear the pack. Rogers on lip tack, was it in the back? And it has been deemed that way. In the finish, a questionable one. Players really having a good go at the football. The short kick has found Jamison, and he's between centre and centre-half forward for Adelaide. He's a beautiful kick. Goes wide, Robbins on his own, inside 50. And Matthew Robbins has the chance to kick his first goal. Robert Walls, some messages quickly down to the bench, and out goes the Richmond runner. Richmond lead by three points, but Matthew Robbin can alter that with this kick. He'll kick from 50. And he'll get the distance. It's a good kick, it's a goal. And Matthew Robbin and Scott Hodges are the goal kickers for Adelaide. They lead two goals to Richmond 1-3. Well, Brendan Gale, who is Robbin's opponent, hasn't been playing centre-half back up until the last few weeks. And... Uh, I think he must learn that if his opponent is a can't be a free option within 50, Gale basically was back in trying to block the full forward's lead and allowed Robin to drift in on the forward flank inside the 50 metre mark and kick accurately. Accuracy in front of goals for the Crows. They lead uh, by three points over Richmond. McCartney, Broderick, another possession. Wide to Campbell, well done. Campbell away on the left. Not a bad kick under pressure. Good mark in the front by Holland against Chalmers. Chalmers seemed to have his measure. He's right there with him. But uh, young Holland, whose brother Nick was in the winning team for Hawthorne last week against Adelaide, stood his ground and took the mark. I think he stood off him a little bit, Chalmers. And Holland's high. He was just a little bit too tall. Uh, probably had to try and get his chest into his back and just try and ease him forward under the ball a little. 19-year-old kicks the ball right there. Richardson is going to be playing. Ball dropping all of a sudden, and Richardson timed it perfectly. Another spectacular mark from this spectacular forward. You'd expect your goal from here. Improves the angle, left foot. He's got it. Two first quarter goals to Richardson. He's one of those players, Lee, that uh, not only excites his teammates, but the fans that come to the ground to watch. There's one play you can't get a loop at the ball. Uh, really smart, even though Richardson was probably standing four metres behind the goal line, he has to get his body into him because that's the thing, Richardson's height and loop. If he gets a loop at the ball, he's just so dangerous above his head. So that goal kick by Matthew Richardson gets the lead back for the Tigers. Just three points. And we've got five and a half minutes left in the first term. The tap down. Tate and Ben Hart. Well done by Tate. In went Daffy. The ball now bashed clear by Brendan Gale. Back towards the middle. Gatherers by Rogers. Handball over the top. Chance for Daffy. Left foot kick. Just sits and floats. Well done by Nigel Smart. Taken again by Daffy. Handballs to no one in particular, but it goes forward, which is not bad. Nice wider still Broderick. This vision by Broderick was better. Richardson over the top. Guy coming up for the Tigers. Kicked by Ben Holland. Well, that's the best bit of football we've seen for a couple of weeks by Richmond to get their third goal. And we know it's an oval-shaped uh, thing, the football, and the winners wobbling along at ground level. It's hard to take possession, I think. It was a fantastic pick-up by Nace. This ball was hard to control. Basically, Tusted had possession. And then with Richardson, he just runs so hard, he dropped Smart off by maybe a good 25 metres. Tony McGuinness and uh, Wayne Campbell getting to the umpire Darren Goldsmith about the blood rule Campbell uh, not happy to come off 3-3 three, three to 2 goals here might just uh, 
He's got the tiniest scratch Just in on the his neck. neck. Yeah, Adam's apple area. And uh, Chris Bradshaw, the doctor, alongside of him. Nathan Bauer comes on. Right knee bandaged up. First game since round seven. Crows have got to hang on here because Richmond uh, have been inspired by their last two goals. Richardson playing a part in all three of their goals tonight. It's 3-3 to 2, so Nigel Smart, the number one defender, getting beaten, and Broderick is cutting them apart early. Kicks the ball again to 50. Naish, who did handle the ball so brilliantly, as Lee said a moment ago. Richardson, that's out on the floor, surely. No, might be a free kick here. Yes, going to Smart. I thought it might have been against uh, the Crows for a moment, but uh, no, Smart's getting it at half-back. Kick to centre wing, just pops it up in the air, hoping that Pittman can take the mark. Deer will claim the mark and get it. Well done, he thought it out, Broderick again to Richardson. A familiar sight, isn't it? It's starting to happen for uh, Richmond. Richardson goes long to full forward. Charles is a flyer, so is Holland. Bond, Holland's handball. Daffy couldn't quite get it on the left foot, normally terrific like this. He's kicked another one. The more I see him, the more I like him, Daffy. Well, he's just, he's just such a quick kick across his body, on the foot. And that's really what it is. He's able to kick the ball 40 metres uh, across his body. Not too many players are able to do that. Not as easy as it looks, but uh, such a dangerous forward, Daffy. Any time he gets the ball within 50 metres, you know, you yeah, always think he's a chance of scoring. Well, that was another good goal. Kicked by Rich Richmond. 4-3 to two goals. Rick Deer doing a reasonably good job up against Pittman, but Pittman gets his hand to it. Andrew Jarman, Ben Hart. Now the ball forced forward for the Crows, but it's chopped off by Brendan Gale. He's kicked to the wing. No mark. The ball spills to the front. Michael Gale off the ground was fairly intelligent play. Gathers about 50 metres in the finish. Taken by Bond, close to the line. He kicks quickly, but he may have been out of bounds as he kicked the ball. So it will have to come back to close to the 50 metre line for Richmond where the Banbury umpire will throw it in. The other midfield matchup that uh, is hurting the Crows is uh, Paul Broderick. He's getting far too much of the ball against Chris McDermott. That is uh, a contest not going well for the Crows. Charles now to do the ruck work up against McCartney. Much taller player, Justin Charles. Trying to get through there was young Collins. Ball with Bond, he forces it forward. Broderick, can he slip the prosciutto tackle? He can, but his kick is way off line. Looked as though it may have been out of bounds on the full, but the goal umpire gives it behind. And Bowers just striding very, very quickly to the interchange bench. And on goes Campbell with just three and a half minutes left in the term. Richmond lead. They're 4 4. Adelaide are two goals straight. 11 possessions for Broderick. Richmond's little burst. They kicked three goals in three and a half minutes a moment ago. Chalmers or Bond. His elasticity helped him there. Slow, wide kick to Bickley who's having his uh, hands full with Daffy good kick to Jamison at centre wing look where Adelaide have fallen down a bit from this point on Robin's been good he's got Ben Hart all on his own turned his back missed the opportunity now kicks to full forward Hodges flies brought the ball to the ground well read though by Prescott who's been good so is Charles Charles kicks the ball intelligently to Deer who's had a fantastic opening turn he stretches Jamison to the limit Kicks the ball inside 50. Missed by Chalmers. Ball goes to ground. Collins, well done. Bond's going to take Rogers on and come away. And kick the ball very well to Hart. That's good play from the back. Ben Hart, who's uh, kicked now to full forward. Modric the back. Just wanting the ball to come there. Pushed forward again by uh, Burke. Got a second go off for Hodges. And then kicks the ball out of play at uh, centre wing. Is it? Yes, it is with Richmond 4-4 and Adelaide two goals. Two and a half minutes left. Tony McGuinness, the Adelaide bench now. So interested on lookers there. Crows got off to a reasonable start. Hodges kicked the first goal of the game. Deer and Pittman at it once again. Fairly well ineffective. Ben Hart tackled by Tate. Probably would have played a fair amount of junior football against each other, you would think. Jamie Tate, uh, an ex- South Australian now playing with Richmond 
and Ben Hart, one of the exciting young players with the Adelaide Crows. Ruck contest, the ball forced forward, lip tap, tackled, got his left foot to it. Brendan Gale just looks a little bit more comfortable, doesn't he? Back there in defence, he kicks it back towards the wing. Andrew Jarman and Bond, Jarman drops the chest mark, probably finished up with it a little too easily. Bickley, his kick, absolutely clean bowls, Pittman, Rogers, handball, look at this setup. Away go the Tides, this is Daffy on the end of the hand pass, goes for goal Nick Daffy, long kick offline. And through for the Tigers, ninth score of the quarter, 4-5, Adelaide are uh, two goals. Don't you see that so often, he kicked the ball probably from about 51 metres, Daffy, when he had a paddock in front of him, could have ran much closer to goal. Pickley a bit stiff there, Miranda looked to uh, interfere, play on, McDermott. I think Liptak's been moved on to Broderick, by the way, Lee. Here's uh, Charles, free kick coming back to Marinda. So Adelaide had three against one and have lost the football in the end. Dangerous signs. Oh, look at this. Daffy alone. It was actually Naish making position. And Daffy's man had to quickly go yeah. for Naish and left this guy on his own. So Bond's on Naish and Bickley's on Daffy. Daffy to kick from 40 metres. Part of the problems with the kick-in uh, situation when the opposition are playing a zone defence, every every uh, player is a, removed from his teammate and it's hard to cover if the opposition get a quick rebound possession. Kicks are very high, Daffy, and pushes. So he's kicked one three in the opening term. And Richmond has gone from one three to two goals to four six to two goals. So they kick the last 3-3 of the match. Chalmers kicks the ball in Pittman's direction. And nearly got it, got his hands on it. Broderick somehow found some space. And then when his right foot kicks to Daffy. Goes on with it. Caught. Should be a free kick, shouldn't it? Surely. Must be. It was deemed as a throw. But gee whiz, he was lucky he wasn't penalised for being caught with the football. But still, Collins has the free kick. Good perseverance there by... The uh, ex-under-18 uh, player for the Northern Knights now playing with the Crows. The kick towards centre wing, terrific mark by Tate. 188 centimetres and he plays like a taller player. Campbell's kick to centre half forward. Marking contest, the ball comes to the ground. Miranda unselfishly. Daffy should knock this up. He'll grill it home for the Tides. It's another goal to Nick Daffy as it goes, missed it. Crows kicked it. Gee, where's the look on his face? <laughs> You wonder from the look on his face whether he's been a bit lucky there. But he's kicked Richmond's fifth goal right on the siren. And they lead 5-6 to two goals. Yeah, and real problems on the kick-ins for the Crows. A couple of times the uh, Richmond have been able to uh, win possession in the first or second uh, time. And their forwards are all clear and have had shots at goal. It's only inaccuracy, really. 11 scoring shots to two. It was really a very dominant quarter by uh, Richmond. More dominant in general play than even the scoreboard probably indicates, but still a good lead. And it happened pretty quickly too, Lee, with that burst of three goals. Richardson playing such a, a part for uh, Richmond. Their, their midfield's been so good. I mean, uh, Bond has got Jarman pretty much tied up. Uh, Broderick killed McDermott. Lip tax now on him. Rogers is in that part of the ground. And really the whole Richmond midfield has got so much more run and pace than the Crows have. And they've got a handy lead, haven't they, now, quarter time. It's 5-6 the Tigers. The Crows are two goals. Dipper and Curls uh, uh, on the boundary line and we'll catch up with them uh, after half time. It's 5-6 to 2 goals or if they've got anything to report in this term they'll come in on it. It's 36 to 12. Adelaide uh, struggling late in that term. Richmond kicked 4 goals 3 in the last 9.5 minutes of the quarter. Oh good effort, not quite making it hard. McGuinness pushes the ball forward. Well done Burke. Kicks it away in a hurry. Jamison overran it, taken by Ryan. Ryan's handball okay. Broderick was fantastic in the opening quarter with 12 possessions. Bond, clever handball to Gale. Richmond going well. Gale's kicked to half forward. Finds his man in Charles. He looked to play on. He's now called to go. Long way from home. Kicks the ball to set a half forward. Holland the target. Chalmers away. Rashido gone, holding the footy. Couldn't break the tackle. Not too often Mark Rashido can't burst his way through. I think he had to come out clear on his left foot and he wanted to get back onto the right side and got himself into trouble. Ben Holland, 55 metres out. Kicks the ball very, very well. Adelaide player pushed in the back. will get a free kick, Nigel Smart, against Richardson. And he's been allowed to play on. 
So Smart runs away from the goal square. He's now 30 metres from his defensive goal. His kick has been marked by Michael Gale. Maybe looking to play on. McGuinness held him up. Goes back and kicks over the mark towards the centre-half forward position. But the mark is taken by McCartney. McCartney for Adelaide. Allowed to play on straight down the ground. His kick is 50 metres plus. But a good mark. Very, very well done, Brendan Gale. Does look much more accomplished in that key defensive position. Bond takes the hand pass, then kicks to Campbell. Campbell being called to play on. Kicks across towards the full forward area. At the back was Richardson. Oh, Naish! He'll go in and drill it. He's got it, Chris Naish. Some great forward cooperation work. Matthew Richardson and Chris Naish. Naish gets Richmond's sixth goal. Yes, things are looking very uh, dangerous for the Crows at the moment. Richmond, very good. Very unusual finish this one. I mean, Wayne Campbell really playing out of the fences, uh, running up the ground. And But really, it was Nace who got the crumb ball, and uh, it was the finish that uh, bemused me a little bit. He sort of decided to grub the ball and really <laughs> bounce it end over end. Maybe it was always going to go straight. Tipper and Curl, 6-6 six, six to two goals. Your four, thoughts on the first quarter, guys, quickly. Well, it was a fantastic uh, quarter by uh, Richmond, and uh, Robert Walls was full of confidence in his half-four line, and did say, keep the ball going through, Justin Charles was playing a magnificent game. Marked by Burt Curls. Well, the Crows are just being outgunned at the moment. Richmond have far too many winners across the midfield, and particularly up forward. Thanks, guys. Bonds kicked to half-forward. Miranda, Collins. Charles has been terrific. He's had a big year, and got a push from McCartney, and gets the free kick. Miranda's away from Collins, by the way. Just gave the footy up to Charles. He kicked a set of half forward, went through a couple of players' hands, including Lipta. Godrick's going to kick another one. Godrick's goal. Seven goals, six to two goals. So Richmond has kicked the last six goals in this match. I think it starts with a free kick that didn't need to be given. We didn't quite see it on screen. And uh, Jason McCartney is inclined to give away the two or three free kicks a game that are really just a little bit unnecessary. And uh, Broderick had a terrific game and did the finishing for Richmond. Broderick with statistics that are very impressive. Eight kicks, five handballs, and has kicked Richmond's seventh goal. Andrew Jarman gets the ball clear of the centre. It'll bounce at centre half forward for Adelaide, but taken away by Brendan Gale. Kicks the ball, and he follows it over for a boundary throw. So he'd be fairly happy with that result, you would think. Brendan Gale, three kicks, one mark, one hand pass. Pittman and Deer. McDermott at the back. Deer. Pittman gets his right fist to it. Ben Hart. Got the hand pass away. Michael Gale. Broderick again. He's just accumulating statistics. Hand pass. Prescott. Runs away from the wing. One bounce. Can do it again. Could even do it again. And he does. For three times. Four. Up towards the 50 metre line. He's going to have to kick now. Nearly went over the distance. Towards full forward. Good mark. Excellent mark taken by Chalmers at full back for Adelaide. Chief Pittman was the man chasing too. Uh, he tried his heart out the big ruckman, but he was forced to chase. And this is his opponent. Prescott's opponent with Kudo went to the other side of the ground. Maybe that's not very good chasing. Jarman underneath it. Takes it comfortably at centre wing. Long way from home. Kicks the ball to centre half forward. Robin and Gale. Gale punches away. Robin onto it. They've had a pretty good duel. McDermott. Handball put Connell under a bit of pressure. Ryan gets up, Robin on to him, McGuinness clever, back to Connell, tries to squeeze one, cleverly done, to Liptak, takes the mark, about 35, 40 metres from goal. Tactically straight in front, good play Connell, going forward. Well this is how he made his name early, wasn't it, as a goal kicking half forward pocket man, and he's had a great year Liptak as a run with player, but uh, normally a good kick for goal, and that's no exception, well done. Lee, they've been accurate, that's for sure. <laughs> Three shots and they've yeah. all got home. To say they needed, that's an understatement. But, uh, yeah, Liptak did a fairly good job. He'd probably break even uh, with Rogers in the uh, in the first bit of the fourth quarter. But now, because of Broderick's uh, dominance on McDermott, uh, he's basically picking up uh, Broderick, but uh, pushed into the 50 to be able to create that loose man option and certainly an accurate conversion again. 
Liptak kicks Adelaide's third goal. Young McLeod on the bench at the stage of the game. And the big men to go at it once again back at the centre. 7-6 Richmond. Adelaide are three straight. <laughs> Is he playing the game of his life, Broderick? Head pass, Miranda from inside 50. Miranda goes. And it's another Richmond goal. Well, that was just a little too easy. Well, I think he's a very important player for Richmond now, uh, Paul, Paul Broderick. I think last year he had an exceptional year. The whole midfield of Broderick, Campbell and Knights was very good. And uh, I think he's just had a very slow start to the year. But uh, certainly tonight, when he's getting plenty of the ball, very creative player. Fantastic play by Richmond. Broderick 15 possessions early. Richmond's lead is uh, significant. Pushed forward by Charles. Rusciuto under pressure. Has been most times he's got the ball. Out wide. Liptak digging in deep. He'll need to on Broderick. His wobbly old kick. Ben Hart couldn't quite take the mark. Ben hangs on to it for a long time. Tries to push forward. Connell to McGuinness. Under pressure, McGuinness forced to the boundary line. Pushes the ball back to Liptak, who's working hard. To Rodman, tries to break the tackle. Looks for Jarman. Jarman pushes for Bond courageously in there. So is McDermott. Jarman ridden into the ground. Campbell gets a high tackle. No free kick. It's, it's going to be a bounce. I've got a whistle. I thought it was courageous umpiring. You let it go. Let it go. What a nervous umpires would have paid about four free kicks then, but I think he made them earn it. Kept his nerve. Bounce 50 metres from goal. Two Liptak covering some ground for Adelaide at the moment, trying to lift. Deere and Pittman, McGuinness, down to Connell. High ball, about 20 metres from goal. Modra had a fly, he hasn't really got into the game at all. Pushed forward by Tate. Burke happy to see the ball roll out of play. Left forward pocket. I think Liptak has to do some running because really Jarman and McDermott, they're not the most athletic midfielders, so he's taken a big load in there, Liptak, in terms of running ability. Richmond by six goals. The ball thrown in left forward pocket for the Crows. The ball comes back towards the 50 metre line. Liptak, awkward, spins away, then tackled by Bond. Tries to get the hand pass away, but uh, the tackle was effective enough for the umpire to award the free kick back to Chris Bond. His kick will land close to centre wing. Knocked away. Chance there for Prescott. Gets it back to Charles. Well done. Gee, out of something, Richmond have possession. Away goes Campbell. Gets past Connell. Then over the top. He sets something up here. Daffy can break the tackle and then kick directly towards goal. Back there, Smart. Punches away. The ball at the front. Well done by young Holland. Rogers. Hand pass into the path there of Daffy. He's down. Nash gets it to Prescott. Further wide to Gale. Gale kicked the goal from this position last week. But that kick was an ordinary one by Michael Gale. And it's mopped up by Bond. The kick back towards the wing. Very awkward bounce for Robram. Michael Gale gets back to help out. The hand pass makes it awkward for his brother Brendan. And Robram and Brendan Gale able to lock it up just forward of centre wing in Richmond's attacking half. The Tigers lead 8-6. Adelaide are three goals with 13 minutes left in the second third. They really need to get some run in the midfield. The Crows, McGuinness or Acuto, one of those players. They really need more of that. Just too slow in there. Tia in the direction of the Rogers. McDermott cutting it off. Boundary throw in. Chris McDermott back. He's had some groin problems this year. First game uh, since round five. Huffing and blowing too. He's been playing with Glenelg uh, in the South Australian National Football League. Campbell, well done to Bond. Bond with space. Could kick a goal. He's 50 metres out. He's kicked it beautifully for another one. And again able to run away off his man and create, and Richmond's lead now is seven goals. Well, we've seen it over and over again. I mean, Bond is directly manned up against Jarman, and they'll be near each other here. And once Bond takes off, have a look at the gap that it creates between Jarman. It ends up being a 40-metre gap. You just can't get there to pressure, and uh, they said a fair few times that the Crows have to get some running power in the midfield. Nine 
six to three goals. Again, Greg Deere instrumental in getting the ball clear of the boundary throw and Pittman gets his right hand to it. Prescott, nearly taken away by Rusciuto, kicked off the ground by Andrew Jarman. Left half forward for Adelaide. The race is on. David Burke kept his eye on the footy. Didn't worry about the nonsense coming from offside there. He kicked it clear and a bit more off. He looks strange in modern football, David Burke. He's only young, but he's got such skinny arms. He, most players are really pumped up with the weights these days. So again, the two combatants, Pittman and Deer. He's a terrific ruck and Greg Deer. Broderick off the ground. Gets close to half forward. Charles and McCartney. Finesses beautifully and gets it to Ryan. Ryan's kick, well, fortuitously in the finish, I would have thought. Landed with Matthew Richardson on the right-hand point of the square. Kicks in towards full forward. Getting back as Charles at the back. Nearly took the mark. Underneath Nash. Tackled by Chalmers appealing for the free kick. But the umpire will bounce in the pocket. Right forward pocket for Richmond. About 25, 30 metres from their goal. They lead 9-6 to three goals. And we're halfway through the second turn. Andrew Coates, Stuart Wenham, Darren Goldspin. The umpires tonight. Well done uh, by Charles. Bond didn't really have it. Bickley there. And uh, Nash and a bounce. Richardson just dropping back. He's about 50 metres behind the play at the moment. Creating a loose man with Deer as Richmond's lead. Deep into the second quarter. McCartney pushes forward. Bickley spins out of trouble. And this is where Richmond has their extra man with Richardson and Deer. Well done, Pittman. Good effort, can't quite get the line. Richardson runs close to it, keeps it in in his athletic way. Kicks back to Prescott. 50 metres. I think the uh, term for that is misplaced aggression. Absolutely no point in being aggressive if it uh, costs your team an easy shot at goal. And uh, it's a long 52. McLeod onto the ground for Adelaide. So Prescott will kick from uh, 20 metres out after he uh, took the mark a long way from goal. He's got it. Ten goals, six to three goals. And I think although, uh, I think uh, Jarman may have been taken out of the midfield and Rakuto has probably gone in front of McGuinness, I think it is, has actually gone in. Uh, but really it was a, a mark 80 metres from goal becomes a very easy shot from 20 metres. It's sort of really giving goals away when they're very hard to get. Pittman, what can he do to lift Adelaide? They got off to a reasonable start, but they've been pretty ordinary since then. Prescott overruns it. Kicked out of there by McLeod to half forward, the mark taken by Ben Hart. He could nearly kick this if he made a decision to have a go at it. It's a lovely long kick, right to the line, but getting back is Gasper. And he takes the mark right on the goal line. Just another metre and a half the kick needed to register a score for the Crows. It was a big investment, Gasper, but I think he's been a good player for Richmond this yeah, year. Yep, I concur. His kick lands about 50 metres from the Adelaide goal. Taken there by McDermott, but the tackle was very effective by Broderick. The umpire will bounce on the 50 metre line. For the Crows, just three goals in nearly half a game of football. Got their first goal in the first two or three minutes kicked by Scott Hodges. They've only kicked two goals in about 40 minutes of the rest of the game. Pittman, Ben Hart, couldn't quite well play. Broderick brilliantly to Rogers, to Bond. And Richmond charge away through the Bond. Kicked to half forward, looking out wide. Onto it, Daffy. He's got Nace running for him. Daffy gets away a bit too easily. Kicks to full forward. Front spot, Holland. Good effort, Chalmers. Punches to the boundary line and gets it. But don't Richmond move the ball from one end of the ground so quickly here tonight? 
Well, we, we've mentioned running power a few times, and Tony McGuinness has been put into the midfield, but uh, Wayne Campbell's gone with him, so I'm, I'm not sure whether the Crows will help or hinder them, and I think they've just got too many good running players, Richmond, compared to the uh, Crows personnel. Right forward pocket, Charles and McCartney. Charles tackled by McDermott. Rogers over the top, Bond. Then McGuinness and also Campbell, and another bounce. Richmond are tending to play one-on-one. -on -one. I would wonder whether a kudo in uh, who Prescott, I think, would probably go with him, might be uh, a river. I think Crows have to try and work on the fact that the Richmond players are playing pretty much one-on-one -on -one all over uh, the round that midfield area. Crows winning the set of breaks in the second term. Jarman's got the ball out of there a few times, but it's uh, been against them. Richmond has added uh, five goals without a miss in this quarter, and Adelaide's kick one. So the margin is out to a whopping 48 points. And there's still plenty of time for Richmond to add to that uh, score as it stands at this moment. 10-6 to three goals. Nash, left foot snap, close, bounces. Just to the left. And through for a behind. As I mentioned before, because the Richmond are playing one-on-one, -on -one, and sometimes the Crows have, a, Robert Shaw might have to put the three on ballers in to get what he would think is the three uh, least likely of the Richmond on ballers. So uh, that's what I meant by using that. Chalmers, long kick, out towards centre-half back. Ball bounces at the back. Roderick, again, just knocking up, getting hold of the football. Kicks into the half-forward area, nearly marked by Holland. Away goes Jamison, tackle on Gale, smart. Brought to the ground, Jarman, well done by Campbell, but still Jarman persists. McGuinness beaten for the ball. Rusciuto tries to get the hand pass away, but it just gets turned over by relentless pressure applied by the Tigers. The ball in their left forward pocket area. The hand pass from Naish. The kick by Rogers is hit the post. Gee, it was a good snapshot, wasn't it? Just not able to thread it through in the finish. Matthew Rogers nearly becoming Richmond's ninth goal kicker. And we've got seven, eight minutes plus another half left in this match. Chalmers to kick it in for the Crows. Goes long. Jamison, good mark in the front. 18 scoring shots to three at the moment. That does tell a tale. 68 to 18. Jamison. Keeping the ball pretty low, looking for Robin. Gale's got on top in this term after Robin was very good in the opening quarter. Modri without a possession at full forward. Haven't got it down there too often, admittedly. And Hodges with that early goal. Lip tack and Robin, the other goal scorers for Adelaide. As Robbo said, Richmond have got eight goal scorers so far. Lip tack, well done, pushes forward. McGuinness wheels around onto that left as he uh, has done for many years. Kicks the ball back to 50. Ben Hart front spot. Tape against him. McLeod in there. Out of play. Jarman unable to get control of it before uh, the ball in fact out of play when McLeod tried to have it. And a boundary throw in about 55 metres from Adelaide's goal. Richmond hoping to get into the eight tonight. If they keep going like they are, they will. The percentage will be interesting at the end. Tapes handball. Prescott runs away again. Terrific walk off the ball by Richmond. Prescott's handball. Charles probably got in Campbell's road in the end. Handballs to Rogers. Gone. Bickley's tackle okay. Broderick Rusciuto's got him. He dropped it. Play on. Rogers has got it. Chips away to the pocket. Ben Holland's been pretty good. Chalmers will try and force it towards the line. He does. Boundary throw in 50 metres from Richmond's goal. He knew exactly what Chalmers wanted to do, but he did it smart enough to get the ball out of bounds without being free kick. That was absolutely all he wanted to do. Three Richmond players surrounded him. 50 metres from Richmond's goal. They lead 10 8 to three goals. The Adelaide Crows. Charles gets the front posse. The ball at the back. Allen's on the ground now for Adelaide. Campbell underneath there. Kicked away by Rusciuto, but not far enough. Michael Gale gets his right foot to it. The ball spills in front of the Richmond goal. Naish tries to get Miranda, misses Prescott. Miranda in after it again. And the ball locked up at centre half forward for Richmond. Jarman now down right on the full forward line. Picked up by Chris Bond. I wonder if that's to take Bond out of the play as much as to put Jarman at full forward, I suspect. And apparently very slippery down there at ground level. Well done again, forced into the open, Campbell. Gee, this looks easy, doesn't it? Tigers get another one. Nine goal kickers now for Richmond, 11-8 to Adelaide, three goals. Well, that's the advantage there of having a very tall 
centre half forward. I mean, Charles against who's virtually a ruckman type against his direct opponent, McCartney. Terrific knock, 15 metres forward onto the running Campbell. Pittman's playing back with Greer, and uh, that's a great advantage of a very tall centre half forward. Seventy-four to eighteen. Charles dominating at centre half forward. Pittman free kick against Deer. Charles seven kicks, three handballs, three marks. Haven coming on for Adelaide. Not sure who's coming off yet. Kick by uh, Pittman to centre half forward. Robin backing back off the uh, out of the air. Really by McLeod now chases. Tape with him out of play. Right forward pocket. Three Tigers around McLeod who did well to keep it in. And Pittman coming off and Caven going on. Robin will probably go into the ball, I would imagine. Caven will... Well, there's the last score for the Crows. Lip tack goal in the second quarter. Gasper didn't concede. Rogers attacks. Jarman kicks the goal. to four goals. Charman's first. And basically again second with the ball. Just the fact that Chris Bond overran the ball uh, which allowed Jarman really to uh, get the position. I suppose Gasper wasn't sure whether to force it through for Perk but uh, again the ball does look a bit wet and slippy. Very dewy uh, grass obviously as Curl said making the ball a little slippery. Harrison preparing to come on for Richmond. As the ball bounced back at the centre, Greg Deer continues to do well. Prescott overruns it. Earlier on in the game, he was just gathering everything. Prescott, McGuinness does well to get back and have a second go at it. Nearly gathered by Allen, but uh, Richmond just with numbers, forcing it clear. Only as far as McGuinness, he runs clear of the pack. After three bounces, he may set this up. He's had four. He gets near centre half forward. Five. Over the top, Bob Reeds, all sorts of strife. And away go the Tigers. David Burke. Eyes only for the footy, and shorty and ball handle. The kick, slews off the side, it may have been meant. Daffy, handball over the top, makes it awkward for the big fella Deer. He tries to tap it on. Ah, oh, chopped off there by Robin. Robin, caught by Miranda. In all sorts of strife at half forward was Allen. Half back for Adelaide, Robin, Caven, no one in particular, and just that irrepressible stuff there by Richmond. Rogers left foot kick to full forward is going to be marked. And quite securely by Paul Brockwick. He's about 40 metres out, and there's no one on the man in the pocket, and that is Campbell. Just his sixth kick coming up. Well, it's not being allowed, but Brockwick just wants to pass it off. Such a good kick of the football, Paul Broderick. You'd think he'd be able to uh, capitalise on this chance and kick another goal for Richmond. It will be their 12th. He's kicking from about 40 metres. And the left foot kick is close. It is a goal. Broderick second goal, Richmond get their 12th, their 12-8 to Adelaide, four goals. Well, it's one-way traffic, I mean, fantastic night for Broderick, he's kicked his, uh, kicked his couple of goals, bit unlucky there, the Adelaide player, the uh, Richmond Harrison, I think it was, came off interchange and uh, caught him on the blind side and on the rebound. Uh, Broderick, 18 possessions, two goals, fantastic first half of football. Twelve eight to four goals. What a game for Broderick. Rodman doing the ruck work. Gets it down well to Rashudo, but Charles' second effort was excellent. Rashudo in hard again, and again a bounce. Justin Charles has been one of the big improvers in uh, 1996. As Mark Rashudo battled away, gave a, a free kick, which resulted in a goal. There's Charles, good athlete. 
again, his ruck worked very good. Ben Hart taken by Tate. Jamison Bickley quickly onto the boot, gets it to 50. Well done, Caven, to push football, gave a free kick. Well, not so well done, I guess. Burke gets the ball away. Campbell getting more and more of the ball. Campbell then measures it to Miranda. Richardson it falls into his lap. Poor kick. Probably could have uh, steadied a bit more and run in and out of play. But he is so instinctive, Richardson. He plays on instinct, on reflex. And had it come off, it would have been a gem. It's hard to criticise such a player. 12 goals, 8 to 4 goals. Left forward pocket. Tigers having a fantastic match. Ben Hart, who's uh, been completely cut out of it at half forward, having a run on the ball. Belts the ball out of play. And there's the man of the moment. Saw him last week against St Kilda play a very good game. He's been even better tonight. 18 positions in nearly half a game. Can he get another one? Yes, well he did, but the ball was over. And he wouldn't be too worried about that. He's been a terrific player so far in this game, Paul Broderick. You can see there the time remaining in the second term. Richmond lead by over nine goals. Ball to the front, Campbell. Slams it onto his right foot, Richardson. Can't keep it in. And the boundary umpire will throw it in, left forward pocket for the Tigers. So there'd be a chance to score here. It's only about four or five metres around from the behind post. Young Holland and Chalmers to do the ruck work. Chalmers with a stronger body. Rusciuto kicks it back. Out towards the wing. McGuinness harassed there by Tate. Tate does well. No free kick given away, which was a possibility in that situation. McGuinness... Just looking a little despondent. Ball thrown in. Right where the Crows enter this uh, arena. Of course, Richmond coming from the opposite side in their home rooms. Rodman at the back with Charles. Daffy. Lip tack onto him. Daffy runs the ball out of play. Another boundary throw in. So not too long remaining in the first half. Dominated by the Tigers. Matthew Robert and Justin Charles. Charles, well done. Hart couldn't get it. Charles has another go. McGuinness, who's uh, trying very hard, kicks the ball high. Caven underneath, couldn't hold the mark. Gale with him. Caven goes to ground. Back to Rusciuto. Good play by Burke. Rusciuto, second go. Jarman and Bond. In the goal square, Bond forces it, hits the behind post. Boundary throw in right forward pocket. Neil Curley sent the word down that the ball was getting very slippery. You can notice how slippery it is right now. It's a hard footy to control. Charles and Robin again. Neither winning it. Rogers, Jarman, clever through the fingers of Gale. They may force it through Richmond. Caven is a left footer. Campbell back okay to Robin. Robin left foot snap very, very high. Not going far enough for a mark. Trying to punch away Richmond off the ground. McLeod the through for behind. Adelaide's first point tonight. They're 4-1. Richmond 12-8. Just noticing uh, Bruce hasn't been down there a great deal, but Tony Modder hasn't touched the ball at this point of the game. Campbell kicks it to himself and then runs away from the goal square. Short kick is going to be all right. And the mark is taken by Gasper. He can go into centre half back. He's got a tall player on his own there. And away they go. Charles again. He's gathered quite a number of possessions so far. Miranda. Great recovery. Cat like recovery by Mark Miranda. Hooks the kick in towards centre half forward. Punched away. The crumbs will be gathered by Nash. He leaves it for Rogers. Rogers snapshot. Well, he couldn't let it go, Matthew Richardson. It was going to be a goal, but he's going to make a certainty of it. Just a terrific play back at half forward by Mark Miranda. It's important to keep your feet, isn't it? That was the critical thing with Miranda. And Matthew Richardson goes in and kicks his third. He 
is the leading goal scorer at the stage. Richmond 13-8 to Adelaide 4-1. The margin, 61 points. We mentioned that Miranda here, he uh, fumbled the mark or dropped the mark and then recovered and then really uh, all the ground level players from Richmond here. And I suppose the ball was almost across the goal line but Matthew Richardson uh, marked it and I suppose a goal to Richardson instead of a goal to Rogers, but still a goal to Richards. Uh, to Richard, I should say. <laughs> They've had a few too, Lee. 13 in the first half. Plenty of them. This is an eight-goal quarter. 86 to 25. Almost half time. Rodram wins the tap. Bickley, Adelaide. Uh, the stats will say they've won it out of the centre more than Richmond. It hasn't added up to anything, though. Ryan quickly onto the boot. Out wide, Daffy. And uh, the Tiger fans are going to cheer their team off the ground. There's a huge contingent of Tiger supporters here around the race where Richmond will walk off. Have a look at them. They're going to give them a mighty ovation when they go off here. They've played their way into the eight in the first half. If we drew the ladder up now, Richmond would be in the eight right now. And for the first time this season, Adelaide would be out of it. 21 scoring shots to five. It's a, a very big margin in general play. Well, what can the pros do to lift their spirits at half time? Look at the Tiger fans. Bond and Gasper there with Campbell as Adelaide try to group. Jarman, one of their goal scorers. And uh, Richmond will come off together. And as I said, they will get a fantastic ovation. They have thrilled their supporters. Here go the pros. And here come the Tonics. Standing ovation and it's half time. You don't see that too often. Fantastic scene here for Richmond's players and at half time they're 13-8, Adelaide a 4-1. As we're about to start the second half, the starting midfield for the Crows, Connell, Bickley and Liptak. They're trying to rotate them through there. So Pittman and Deere as they did at the start of the match to do battle. Pittman wins it, Bickley had it cut off by Broderick. Shane Ellen's quick kick around the body, didn't go very far, in fact touched off the boot play on. McGuinness quickly onto his boot, gets the ball inside 50. Modra didn't really get at it. Well done, uh, McLeod, but uh, Hodges sort of got in his road a bit. And then Tate was able to cut lip tack off, and the ball goes out of play right forward pocket. There's more, Harrison and Bauer. Harrison got a quick run in the second quarter, put a tackle on Caven. Bauer came on when Campbell went off for the blood draw, but they've been on the interchange for most of the match. Deer and uh, Pittman through Bickley, lip tack, Bull slews off his boot a bit, goes across the face, Ben Hart and Prescott there, McLeod off the ground, Burke onto it, he's playing good football Burke, he was excellent last week, tackle on him, put the pressure on him, Modra just uh, unable to bring him down and the boundary throw in about 45 metres away. He had the best chance of what Neil Curley was talking about then. Matty Knight's having a look on. Tony Modra? Hasn't been able to get warm, Modra, has he? It's one chance when McGuinness uh, ran down the ground handball and nothing came of it. Here's McGuinness again to Ryan. Ryan pushes the ball out in front of uh, Broderick. Broderick uh, pushes forward. Rusciuto lets it run away. A boundary throw in. Half forward flank, crows in attack. They're 4-1, Richmond 13-8. The ball has been forced uh, about 85 to 90 metres away from the Crows' goal by the Tiger defence, Pittman, knocked forward by Andrew Jarman, only as far as Campbell. A little bit of underneath the stuff there by Bond. The tackle was too high on Chris Bond, so he will take the free kick. Tony McGuinness not all that pleased with that decision, but uh, it looked a fairly straightforward free kick from this area. Bond, right half back for Richmond. 
high kick, lands at half forward, terrific high leap, no mark, away goes Daffy, Miranda, straight inside 50, kicks to the front of the goals and the kick was ordinary, Ben Holland did have reason to be a little disappointed with that, Chalmers runs away, Holland chased him though, forced him to kick, it was ineffective, but Jamison able to gather, back to Chalmers, Chalmers towards the wing, Ben Hart jumps, jumps early, not paid, stiff Ben Hart, Prescott to Rogers, hand pass looking for Nash, taken by Jamison, hand pass across, Bickley hooks the kick, back near centre wing, good mark taken by McLeod, looks to play on, no one to hand pass to, then the target appears in Jamison, Jamison's kick will land at centre half forward, Richmond defence has been fantastic, Gasper, Bond, underneath that the Crows player locked up at centre half forward, and it is Tony McGuinness, and the umpire looks as though he's going to take the football and bounce it in that area. Frustration shown on the face there of Tony McGuinness. He's found it difficult for most of the night. He's had 14 possessions, but most of them have been under enormous pressure. Pittman knocks it down. The ball for, with Rogers. That was nearly deemed as a throw, surely, but he was allowed to get away with it. Broderick finds Daffy. Quickly plays on, looking for Richardson. Miranda at the back. There's a loose man in the goal square, the handball over the top to Holland, under pressure from Matt Collins and through from behind. So Richmond 13, 9 to 4, 1. 87 to 25. Chalmers to kick the ball in. Short to Bond. Kick the ball in a similar spot in the first quarter. Bond goes on. Back to Chalmers, out wide, gets it to Ellen. Ellen's kicked to centre wing. Oh, Broderick, they got out of tape again, having a good match. Kicks the ball to centre half forward. Richmond have got numbers. It slipped through Charles that time. He brings it in underneath. And it'll be a bounce. In the centre square. Justin Charles. Eight kicks and three handballs and four marks in the first half. Did some terrific ruck work. Wins it against Ellen, so uh, it's like David against Goliath that time. Interesting here, Greg Deer and, and Pittman, the two ruckmen are 20 metres from this, this contest. Deer is running Pittman away, which means Charles contests against Allen. Uh, everything in Richmond's favour when they allow that to happen. Charles goes for well done, Collins. To Bickley. To Ben Hart. Played it well. The shepherd from Collins was good. Hart to Rashudo to Jarman, better build up. Jarman should deliver. Goes it to Hodges, kicks it well. Terrific defence at the back though by uh, Burke. Adelaide with numbers. McGuinness can't quite get to it. Hodges, well done. Back to McGuinness. Then he interrupted Robin. No talking there. McGuinness held up and it's going to be a bounce. Why wouldn't uh, Pittman let Deer go and let someone else pick Deer up? Well, because he's playing one on one on Pittman. What uh, should happen is Pittman should come and do the ruck contest. That's what I thought. Charles said, and Allen yeah. should pick up Deer. Exactly. They're playing one on one, and it falls into Richmond's hands when that kind of situation presents itself. Yeah, that's uh, what I asked. Us. What's happening here? A uh, blood rule, I think, with um, Collins. Collins coming off the ground. The young kid with a cut over his right eye. Chris McDermott coming back on. With all due respect, you wouldn't expect Greg Deer to hurt you too much running around half forward. Well, so it's more the fact is you allow a ruckman type in Charles to, to ruck against a non-ruckman in Allen. That's the critical point, and uh, it's really all it means is swapping opponents just for a short time. Allen goes and picks up Deer, and Pittman does what he does best, the ruck work. It's obviously something Robert Walls has worked out, and uh, was with Richmond's advantage early in the second half, but now Deer and Pittman are back on the ball. Pittman works to the front. Ben Hart came over the back, then attacked it hard. He seems to have uh, been revved up since half-time. And his kick ricochets away, boundary throwing. It's an amazing game of football, isn't it? Uh, at Football Park in Adelaide, they find space. They deliver the ball with precision. They have uh, teamwork working cohesively. And they come over here and they seem like just lost little boys, the Adelaide Crows. And this is another example. The scoreboard, just an absolute shellacking. The Tigers 13-9, Adelaide 4-1. And they'd be 
really well advised to try and gain some pride. Pittman, he tries hard. Ben Hart over the top. McGuinness, can he get past? He gets around onto his favourite left side and then kicks into the pocket. It's a terrific kick. And Ben Hart provided some good running support. He's marked in the left forward pocket. Angle a little difficult. But McGuinness, a great little batter. He's been a good footballer in the AFL for a long period of time, Tony McGuinness. Nine kicks and six handballs. He is the Crows' leading possession gatherer. Mark Rusciuto following closely with nine and four. But this is Ben Hart from 35 metres. Tight angle. Not a bad kick. It's a goal. So well done there by uh, the Crows' captain, Tony McGuinness, to get the ball to Ben Hart. 5-1 they are, but they still trail by 56 points. Richmond a 13-9. Yes, I thought uh, early in the game Ben Hart looked a little dangerous around half forward. He looked a bit quick for Jamie Tate, but he didn't get used when he did create that space. But Tony McGuinness, now he's been a good player, tried very hard for the Crows and has been by far their best midfielder. Five one to thirteen nine. Terrific goal by Hart after McGuinness's work. Jamison quickly onto the boot, doesn't go far. Connell off the ground, a half forward. Rodman again off the ground and out on the full. Just going out, bit stiff Rodman. Tactic was right, it was a hard ball to take. There's Robert Shaw, Martin Mickin at the back. Benny Gale or Brendan to kick the ball back in. The Gale brothers out there for Richmond, he kicks to centre wing. Hart, but to Ellen's giving a free kick away against uh, him on Charles. He was all over his back, wrestling with him. And Charles kicks the ball to full forward. Holland the lead. Chalmers at the back. Oh, Daffy read it beautifully. And then straightens up and kicks a goal. Out of the textbook. A real roving half forward goal. 14 9 to 5 1. It was out of the textbook, Bruce. They always say the percentages are at the front of the pack. You get square to the player marking the ball directly in front of him, trying not to be running too quick, and really, he read it perfectly, Daffy, and a beautiful finish as well. He, uh, dangerous half forward, there's not too many of them in the game, but that was exactly the right percentage coming position. And he's kicked three goals, Nick Daffy, but he's missed a couple of easy ones as well. Neil Curley down at the boundary line. Yeah, Jan Collins a cut above the eye. They've, they've just dished him up, and uh, he's OK. He, he can resume when he wants to. Ryan just missed there by Rusciuto, but uh, the umpire deeming it as a free kick. He moves it quickly, kicks it wide, out in the direction of Daffy. Knocked away by Rusciuto. Daffy quick to recover, close to the line. Gives the hand pass back inboard. No one there in particular. Campbell trying to get his right foot to it. Holland there tackled there by Andrew Jarman. Michael Gale underneath all that. Are just an absolute, well, bunch of crows. Harassing, but not able to clear that half-back line. I was watching off the ball before. I have mentioned Modra hasn't touched the ball. Darren Gasper, whenever the ball is two kicks away, is in front of Modra. He's pushing his right arm back into him just to make sure he doesn't create any space. And uh, really, looks a very impressive uh, defender, Gasper. Pittman and uh, Deer McDermott can't quite get through. Held up by Holland. Holland has to concede some ground, but the clever kick got to Ryan. So a couple of their rookies going well. Ryan to full forward. Big fly from Richardson, taken by Bond. Has to kick the ball in a hurry to a space. McLeod and Campbell. For once you think the Crows have got the legs. And McLeod, he'd be their quickest player. He's got a bit of time. Still under pressure. Did okay, but Richmond got there. Gone, surely. Gale holding the footy. No, no free kick. Ben Hart round the body, getting some touches hard, working hard. Hodges, uh, what much I should say, tries to kick off the ground. Lip tack at the back. Gasper to Tate to Prescott. Richmond away. Prescott's kick will find us, Mark. Campbell will run onto it. Richmond can kick a goal out of this. Campbell 70 metres from goal. Kicks to Richardson, gets it. Gee, Tony Modra at the other end. Amazing. When Campbell kicked the ball in, I thought that's going to go over Richardson's head. <laughs> but he just jumped in the air, Richardson, and he's just so tall. He's got such a fantastic leap. 
the ball. Let's have a look at this. I thought it was going to go over his head, but really up he goes and makes it with plenty of spare. He kicks these goals normally. He's gone back a, a mile. Kick three. 48 metres out. Don't you just love it? A fantastic play. 15-9 to 5-1. And you mentioned down the other end, Bruce, before the rebound came, Tony Modra. He really has lost it tonight. Modra uh, just fumbled the ball. He just can't get a touch. And really, once the rebound came out, hard running Campbell. And really, as I said, lovely leaping mark from the front possession. And a nice kick as well. Well, he's certainly become a better kick, Matthew Richardson, early in his career. A stuttering approach and uh, a lot of easy misses. But uh, he's kicked four straight so far in tonight's match and Richmond 15-9 lead Adelaide 5-1 a free kick to Pittman gives the hand pass away to Rashudo. Rashudo gets back and then kicks towards half forward good mark second in line was Matthew Robin but he grabbed it out of the air and he's taken the football 50 metres from goal he kicked the goal from uh, the opposite uh, side of the 50 metre arc similar angle and the same end of the ground to which this is Robin's kick is a good long kick. Again, it lands right on the line. Lip tack, tackled by Young Ryan. Ball spills for Michael Gale. And you have to wonder what that ruling is because uh, Lip tack, yeah, he, look, he does question the umpire. If you handball the ball away, are you, is the tackler allowed to hang on? No, he shouldn't be. I mean, they give a reasonable, that's a re favourite rule in the world, but reasonable. But uh, yeah, I thought he was a bit stiff not to get a free. Connell's handball. Casper. McLeod trying to cut it off. Casper, well done. Rogers, a tackle by Robin was good. Jamison put McDermott under a bit of pressure. The quick kick back. Hodges sets himself. But Burp and Gasper are just picking him off at the back. And Burp belts it out of play. He's had a couple of times tonight. I mean, it was a big financial investment, uh, Gasper. But he was looking very impressive. I think he's a very much better athlete than I, I thought he was prior to his Richmond days. Ben Hart at the back, pushes the ball back. McLeod, handle forward. Hodges, well done, Scotty Hodges gets his second. That's a good effort. And the Crows go to 6-1 to 15-9. Well, it's hard work, isn't it, for them? They don't, uh, they're not setting up goals, the Crows now. They're really uh, basically just having to battle for them, see if someone can uh, get a lucky bounce. And Hodges bounced over Burke's head and read it a little bit better. And he's got his second goal of the six. So the scoreboard still fairly lopsided. 62 points is the margin. Richmond have kicked the two goals in this third quarter, as has the Crows. Roderick. Just something that probably doesn't get counted, but it was an effective tap on. Rogers tries to get into the park of Daffy. Daffy just favoured a little bit by the bounce. Kicks towards full forward. The ball spills to the back. Matthew Richardson. <laughs> well, that would have been goal of the night if that had gone through. And he kicks his first behind for the evening. 4-1. Daffy, Daffy has kicked three. Broderick has kicked two. And for Adelaide, two goals to Scott Hodges. Missing it was Bickley. Getting there to help him out was Chalmers. Chalmers with no one to kick to, just bombs away back towards the wing. Well done by Pittman, and recovers his position pretty well for a big man. Hand passes away to McDermott. McDermott usually has a look, but that kick is ordinary. Nearly chopped off by the defence there in Tate, but look at Burke back himself and come out in support. Kicks it back to the middle of the ground. An important possession here. Charles, Broderick, Rogers. There just seems to be Richmond colours everywhere. Bond loves to run the middle of the ground. Straight down the NCG goes Chris Bond. He's kicked toward ball forward. And Bond, that's the other Bond for the Crows, takes the mark in the back pocket. To Bickley. Bickley looking for Jamis at Gale. Winning it very quickly. Accelerator past him and took a mark. 45 metres out. Goes for goal, kicks right to the square. Richardson there with Smart and Chalmers, falls through from behind. So another rush point for Richmond. Michael Gale, quick off the mark there. Jamison in front, he whipped around him. 
15-11 to 6-1. So it's 101 to 37. Bond short, but Chalmers goes wide, gets his man and Shane Allen. Looked to go on, but uh, Sword no one was upfield, so he's had to go back and hold up the works for Adelaide now. Then a flow to the centre wing, McLeod front spot, tape at the back. McLeod and Broderick forced out of play. Still just 19 years of age, Andrew McLeod. Kick some important goals for Adelaide. 64 points the margin. Very big crowd here at the left end of the uh, MCG. And getting up towards uh, 50,000, you'd think. Now the free kick coming back to Pittman. So McGuinness away, unable to take the advantage. So Pittman from uh, between half-back and centre wing. Looked to give the hand pass away and then decided to kick into the middle of the ground. The mark is taken by Robram. He looks to play on. Hand passes into the path there of Allen. Allen without changing stride. Kicks in towards full forward. At the back was Modra. Burke took a risk. So did Bond. Terrific stuff. Jarman beaten for it by Prescott. In goes Andrew Jarman to lock it up. Chris Bond there as well and the umpire will bounce. And we saw an example over the other side of the ground where in fact Pittman went. Went and did the ruck work and Allen went and picked up uh, Dia. So uh, as we spoke of before, I think it was one of those things Robert Shaw's probably made sure only happened once or twice. Gee, the month coming up for Adelaide doesn't look all that brilliant, does it? Melbourne, Brisbane, Carlton and the Swans. So a tough assignment for Adelaide if they're to stay in contention with the final eight. The trail in this match, 15-11 Richmond, 6-1. The Crows, so 64 points the margin, and Nash off the ground, and Young Moore to have a really good run at it in this match. We've still got plenty of time left in the third term. McLeod beaten for it by Brendan Gale, bashes it back, only as far as McGuinness. McGuinness tried to get rid of Bond, then kicks with his left foot. Oh, well done. Jamie Tate. Well, is that a mark? No, it must have been touched off the boot, was it? I think Tate thought it was a mark. And obviously play on was called so umpire Darren Goldspeak will bounce right in front of the Crows goal Pittman Deer trying to lay it off to the respective teammates Connell quick kick in Deer it stung him a bit and then Ryan and again a bounce so Adelaide have kicked a couple in this quarter and Richmond a couple margin at half time was 61 Darren Goldsmith waiting for uh, Deer and Pittman to give him a clear bounce. They uh, wrestle one another, run into it, and Deer gets the free kick. It's an unsatisfactory part of the game, isn't it, when those things happen? Prescott gets it away. Left foot to centre wing. Good take, Narendra. He's been in sparkling form all night. Very cheeky. Just ran it out in the end. Boundary throwing. His pace has hurt Adelaide, and he's uh, sure ball handling. A terrific future, Miranda. He's only just turned 20. So Pittman, Deer, a couple of the workhorses. Deer, well done. Pushes forward. Rogers, clever. Kicks the ball along the ground. Daffy and Ellen, it'll run out. Boundary throw in. Daffy picks himself up. He's fine. Let's kick three goals. And it'll be. A throw. Good statistics for half forward flanker come pocket player. Well, he's become an integral part of the Richmond lineup now, Nick Daffy. And so is this guy in the Richmond jumper, Justin Charles. And the ball spills. Kick off the ground by Liptak, back towards the centre. Bond tried to nearly hack it out of the air. Underneath that was Rogers. Ben Hart, handball over the top, not bad. Liptak, McGuinness. We're going to chop it off again, the Tides. Campbell. Out for Michael Gale. He missed it completely. Rebounds now. This is Connell. A high kick by Matt Connell to the 50 metre line. No one home there. Brendan Gale missed a sitter. Gasper knocked off the football by McLeod. McLeod onto his left foot. Snapshot for goal is not bad. Hodges couldn't quite get back. David Burke there for Richmond. And it goes over for boundary throw in. Right forward pocket for Adelaide. Only 15 metres around from their goal. Tiger fans, pretty, plenty to cheer about. 
inside, very much on top, 15-11 to 6-1, and we've got about five minutes left in the third term. Pittman front spot, Deer at the back, McLeod trying to take it out, McDermott deep in the pocket, good kick to bring it back in, Modra gets rid of Gasper, through from behind. 6-2 Adelaide, 15-11. Richmond, there's uh, Ben Harrison. So he's going to come on at a similar time in this term as to when he came on the ground in the second. Campbell looks for Rogers, Liptak, a couple of uh, Richmond players. Gale over Liptak, boundary throwing. So Deer coming off and Harrison on. That was the move uh, before half time. Same thing again here. Deer getting a rest. He's 33 years of age, Deer. So he's giving Richmond terrific service. Pittman gets his right hand to it. Down in front of Liptak, the tackle affected by young Ryan. McDermott gets the hand pass. Rusciuto has a look downfield. The kick not bad, and the mark is taken by David Pittman. In front of Brendan Gale, he's about 50 metres from goal. The player on the mark is inside the 50 metre area, but the kick will have to be a 50 metre kick to score. Scoreboard looking very, very ordinary as far as the Crows are concerned. 6-2 to 15-11. What can David Pittman do to alter that? Modra back in the goal square provides a lead. Pittman ignores it. And kicks to the front of the square in the finish. Oh, he's got it at the back. Terrific mark by Modra. Fourth in line. He's going to get 50 metres. So the angle will now be irrelevant because the penalty putting the Richmond player on the goal line will bring Tony Modra right to the front of the goals. This will be Tony Modra's 300th goal in AFL football. He runs right in and puts it into the grandstand. So the Crows get their seventh. Something to cheer about. Yeah, it's been really happening tonight, but uh, this was the trade back Modra early leap. Well, it wasn't really in a position, but he jumped early and he just pushed the pack under the ball enough to be able to uh, to mark the ball. Uh, pretty spectacular way to get your first touch halfway through the third quarter. Late in the third quarter. Modra's first goal for the match, his first kick, great mark. 15-11 to 7-2. Rusciuto, well done. Crashes through to set a half forward. Gale, Jarman and McLeod. Tate puts the tackle on. So Adelaide have held their ground. They've got to do better than that, admittedly, but uh, they've reduced the margin. And I think one of the areas, Matt Connell, has actually gone on to Paul Broderick and uh, pretty much uh, probably won that duel this particular quarter. So that is one plus for the Crows that they've built on. Pittman works to the front, Charles push forward, Bond, McGuinness and Campbell. Campbell's pace will be a worry for the Crows. It's a good ball handler, well done Campbell. Beautiful kick to Harrison at centre wing. Another build up by the Tigers. Harrison quickly onto the boot to centre half forward. Richardson, smart, punches away. Ellen under pressure, besieged in the front by Moore. Miranda back to Prescott. Just got away from McDermott a bit too easily and then kicks to Charles. 60 metres from Gott. Quickly on. Young Moore's got it. I reckon this might be his first kick of league footy. I don't think he had a kick last week. It's related to Kim Hodgman, who was a fantastic player at Glenelg. Came across to the VFL. Baby faced 18 year old in his second game. He only had a few minutes the other day. Got his hands on it a few times, didn't really have a clear kick, and he's kicked a goal. Look at the bench, don't they like it? He must be a popular guy. That Tiger Land, that kid, 16-11 to 7-2. And he remember that young Ben Moore for the rest of his life. There's uh, goals and games and kicks come and go, but every player remembers his first goal in Luke football. So. Uh, Really great build up by, uh, by Richmond, a lot of players running forward and a really good composed accurate conversion. So the first goal of the evening and the first goal in AFL football for young Ben Moore and you would think by the look of that, the way he kicked it anyway, there will be a lot more to come. 
chance now for uh, Bickley. Andrew Jarman, lip tack, left foot kick by lip tack, will go out on the full. So just nothing happening for the Crows. No cohesion. David Burke, short kick, Bond is on his own. Not quite up to centre half back, Chris Bond. He's had uh, quite a few possessions playing in that defensive role. That kick nearly taken by Harrison, chipping in as McGuinness. Gets around onto his left foot, 50 metres from goal. He hooks the kick and terrific stuff by Modler. He just hasn't been able to slip the tag there of Gasper. But his second mark within two minutes of each other should result in his second goal for the game. Jarman off the ground to be replaced by Ian Collins. In the last minute of the third quarter, as Tony Modra shoots from only 20 metres out, and he gets his second goal in Adelaide's eighth. And Richmond still with a commanding lead, 16-11 to 8-2, and in a season where maybe percentage is going to be quite relevant, this is an important game for Richmond to keep going. Oh, it certainly is, and... Uh... I think uh, from Adelaide's point of view, they're playing for a bit of pride and competitiveness, and I think they've held their head, head up this quarter. They've really had a go at it. Modra has fought his way to take at least a couple of marks, fought his way clear of Gasper, who's played a really disciplined defensive game, uh, and that's the kind of perseverance that the Crows need. 16-11-8-2, the Crows. Modra with a couple of uh, good signs there, good marks and goals. Pittman on top now in the ruck. McDermott back to Connell. To Ellen, didn't go very far, this is the important kick, goes to Jamis, it can go away and kick to the lead of Madra, couldn't quite hold it, it was a great effort, Gasper cleaned him up inadvertently, I'm sure he didn't do it on purpose, but uh, Madra in trouble at the back there, as Rogers goes away, and then kicks the ball to full forward as the siren sounds, and Richmond's big lead at half time has been maintained, Adelaide slightly outscoring them, but Richmond still, with the game well and truly won, they're 16-11 to 8-2, so it's 57 points after they led by 61 at half time. But some better signs for Adelaide. We might have another look at this incident with Modra attacking the footy, Gasper coming at the back, and you'll see that he'll just collect him. Well, maybe he didn't. Looked like he did from where I was originally. I think he probably did. The angle angle didn't really make it uh, very clear. And uh, yes, Robert Walls, if the Crows had got up tonight, maybe he would have been embarrassed by some of those things he said last year. But uh, at the moment, all those things are well in the past. And Robert Shaw, gee, what must be going through his mind? His team just can't make its mark in this city. And they're slipping out of contention quickly after being top of the table after four rounds and in the top two positions after eight, they could be out of the eight tonight. It's 16-11 to eight two. Start the final term. 16-11 to eight two. Richmond kick to the right of screen and Adelaide down to the putt road in. Pittman and Charles, Charles starting in the right. Rusciuto trying to get through, Charles uh, holding his head. And it's gonna be a bounce. Charles uh, in a bit of trouble, probably won't be able to take this bounce, he's recovering now gets back onto Pittman has another go Pittman has got on top in the uh, ruck situation in the knockouts as the game's worn on after Deer did the job early, Robbins handled pretty good to Liptak Liptak around the corner to full forward Hodges, good grab Hodges sticky fingers he doesn't get a long way off the ground these days, he's had some serious injuries but that ball stuck. It was really just a matter of who had the better judgment. Uh, good leap and uh, it was Hodges on that occasion uh, who was able just to mark Burke slightly under the ball. He's made the most of his opportunity so far. He's had two kicks for two goals. Will this be three for three? It's close. The Adelaide player likes it. done his job Lee three goals out of the pocket yes but their full forward line hasn't been good enough and I uh, 
I must say tonight, Hodges has been reasonable, kicked three goals from very limited opportunities. Mod was cooked two from very limited opportunities, but frankly, I look at that uh, grouping down there, those two playing together on the close full forward line, it does, looks to me like they get in each other's road as much as anything else. So a good goal there, kicked there by Scott Hodges, his third. Tony Modder has kicked two, 16-11 to 9-2. Richmond need to finish it off, and as Curl said, the Crows need to keep on battling. McLeod, back to Liptak, who gave him the hand pass in the first place. He's under pressure from Tate. And the ball will be bounced 50 metres from the Crows' goal. Good crowd here at the MCG for this game. As we have a look at the uh, Tiger bench, Greg Deer having a much deserved rest. And his replacement in the ruck, Justin Charles, nearly having his jumper torn from his back. He looks as though he's recovered from that head collision. And then Gale giving him uh, just uh, maybe a little suggestion there. So we'll see what they had in mind. Nothing, because David Pittman got his right fist to it. Ben Hart runs into his own man, which is Jamison. Bounces off and then kicks to a vacant half-forward area. Connell lines it up. Goes for goal, and he's got another goal on the scoreboard for the Crows. Matt Connell kicks his first. And from the Crows' point of view, they've now kicked six goals since half-time to Richmond's three. Well, they really, they worked their way into the game in that uh, third quarter in that sort of general play. Long way behind on the scoreboard, of course, but certainly they've come out early in this last quarter, kicked the first two goals, said Matt Connell, gone on, done fairly well in the midfield on Perth Rodney. Charles and Pippen bow on the ground, by the way, for Richmond Ryan off. McDermott to Rashido, the pros getting a run on to Collins. Looking for someone to kick to, plays on, kicks to full forward, Hodges at the back, good take by Burke in the front. An important mark because Adelaide have got some spirit at the moment. They're playing their best football of the night, say, for maybe the first ten minutes. Rogers has kicked the centre wing to Broderick. Good kick. Broderick just three touches since half-time. Fantastic in the first half when he had 17 and kicked two goals. In short, Charles holds his ground, Connell in hard. Charles runs away. Connell just lacked a bit of concentration there when Charles able to get away. Chalmers in the front, Bond. Pings it off well and then kicks very accurately to Pittman, to Jamison. Normally a good kick. One bounce. He's got Connell over the top. Nothing really happening to Pittman. Pittman to half forward. Modra at the back. Pushes Gasper out. Free kick against him. Gasper's got it. Well, you just don't get away with it with three umpires. Gasper with the free kick between full back and left half back. Kick short, too short. Robin able to get his uh, just his left foot to it, which was important. Connell, another important position. McDermott in towards half forward, taken by Bauer. Bauer quickly, wide, very, very wide. Leading in the race is Ben Hart. The bounce important. He slips over. Can he recover? Gets the hand pass. Not bad either, but quickly, he's been out of sorts completely. Ben Hart. Space, yes, for a hand pass to Bickley. Bickley to centre forward. Well done, that was good spotting. And Pickman is marked. at centre half forward for Adelaide. So the Crows fans have got something to uh, get a little excited about. It may be a bit chilly down there at ground level. And the Crows have uh, been a spirited unit probably since half time. Since then, they've outscored Richmond. Finally, Pittman, he's been uh, pushing into the forward line and trying to become another forward target around half forward for the uh, Crows, but that's the first time tonight he's been able to get used in that position. Big kick of the football. Gets the distance easily. No accuracy whatsoever out of bounds of the full. So, very, very disappointing result. Andrew Jarman having a spell on the bench. Short kick for Campbell, knocked away quite effectively by Ben Hart and the boundary umpire will throw it in about 35 to 40 metres around from the close goal. Charles, the ruck work against Pittman. At the back, down to Connell, he's had a great second half. High ball to full forward. Modric, Gasper, Hodges through their fingers. 
Gasper to Broderick, well played, eluded to Pittman, kicks the ball out to centre wing, was great kick actually, and got to Harrison, Harrison in board, to Campbell, Campbell's kicked to half forward, big fly came from Richardson, smart, under pressure, gave it up too easily, Moore's quick kick to full forward, Chalmers, Holland plays him like a defender, brings the ball to the ground, has another go, Chalmers second effort not bad, Moore under pressure from Ellen, close to the line, Daffy kept it in, Adelaide defending hard, Ellen caught by Rogers. ball still in play, still in play, bounce, right forward pocket, Ben Moore kicked a goal in the third quarter, Chalmers, it ricochets off Holland, boundary throwing. Well, you'd have to think that Richmond would uh, have a reasonably good future. I mean, Greg Deere is probably uh, getting a little bit old in the tooth there, but uh, a lot of their players are young, aren't yeah, they? Plenty of football and all the rest. Uh, Deere has been a great player for a long time, and I think he's been good tonight as well. So Crow's trying to get clear of the half-back line. Pittman and Charles. In goes Harrison, fierce at the football and locks it up for the Tigers at centre half forward, the umpire will bounce. 16-11, 107 Richmond, 10-2-62, the margin 45 points. And it was a uh, well over 60 points at half time. But the Crows have done a reasonable amount of work so far in the second half. Broderick's kick will get close to the line, nearly taken by Smart. Moore, off the ground, he's got his second goal. Well, the youngster to kick his second goal, 17-11 to 10-2. And don't play his eyes light up when they've got a chance to uh, find a yard to uh, get on the end of a loose ball that results in a goal. And uh, we see the fumbled marking contest, and I think Moore saw as soon as the ball uh, fell off that contest. If I get there first, it's a goal to me. Good desperate attempt by Bond, but couldn't quite make it. Seventeen, eleven to ten, two more with his second goal. To saw Broderick and Connell together. Pittman, well done to McDermott. They've won the centre breaks out late. To Ellen, Ellen's kick doesn't go very far. Robin at the back. McLeod back to Pittman. Fade of the handball, straightens up, kicks for goal. It's there. It's a goal. Good effort, big fellow. He was beaten early, but he's coming home hard, Pittman. 17-11 to 11-2. Yes, one has to say he's one of the Crows' uh, handful of players that have really uh, kept, uh, well, have been fairly consistent all night, I suppose. His ruck work has been, uh, has been pretty good. He's been trying to push into the forward line and make himself a goal scorer. And then this last quarter has at least had a couple of shots, even though that one before went out of bounds. Seven goals to four since half-time, favouring Adelaide. Campbell. Gets the ball out of that busy area around the centre. In the direction there of Moore. Bond slips over. Away goes Prescott. Couldn't quite keep his footing. In the right forward pocket for Richmond. The ball will spill over for a throw in. About 20 metres around for the Tiger goal. Robert Shaw with uh, Mark Bicken in the background. And he's had a busy night, hasn't he? Robert Shaw trying to come up with moves to counter the Tigers who have been quite irrepressible. And here's uh, one of those uh, just the gregarious types, Justin Charles. Just loves getting hold of the footy, playing, jumping, chasing, running. Mark Bickley gets a free kick for the Crows. Kicks across the full back line. It's going to break down. Michael Gale should run in and kick a goal. And selfishly gives it to Campbell. Campbell from the angle. Just a little pot shot puts it through for a goal. goals to one Campbell, Tigers with 10 goal kickers, Adelaide with 8, big margin in favour of Richmond. And I think Matthew Richardson might be asking Nigel Smart, did he uh, go hard enough at this? Two players, ball between them and I think one went for the ball and marked it and the other player wasn't quite so sure what he was doing. Eighteen, eleven to 11 to a couple of goals to Campbell. Richmond answering Adelaide in the final turn. 
Pippen and Charles again uh, just favouring the Crows. Connor out of the centre, kicks the ball wide to Liptak. Good mark. Looking for uh, to push Bauer back. He's probably hoping he'd get a 50, Liptak. He's kept trying all night. Sloppy old kick, but he finds uh, a man in Collins at centre half forward. Now Hodges and Modra. Modra leads now. He kicks to him. He's got him. He found a way, the ball. Sort of floated away and got to Modra. Now the one thing you can say about Modra and Hodges tonight is they haven't missed. But five shots between them and kick five. Watch this good thing go under Lee. When you give them a rat. No, he's done it again, Modra. Well done. It's a good return, six kicks. I think they've had six kicks between them for six goals. Oh, the six, uh, six kicks for six goals, or maybe seven kicks for six goals, but uh, they certainly have found kicks hard to get, but at least uh, when they've had a shot, they've been able to uh, kick accurate, and it, uh, it always makes it look a little bit better if you kick three goals rather than three behinds, even though they had very little of the ball. So a 100% uh, return by the two key forwards for Adelaide. Not many kicks between them, but they've kicked six goals. McDermott, Shane Allen, now Jamison. He's on centre wing. He'll kick the Crows inside 50 metres. Getting back was Bond. Couldn't take the mark. The cloud. Gee, that was a good tackle by Gasper. Just split it up there for Bond, and Bond kicks at the Gale. Covered in the blue of the uh, logo, the Coca-Cola Centenary Season AFL logo. And Robert Shaw. I think Chris McDermott in his second stint back on the ground has, uh, has done fairly well. Fed out a fair few uh, handballs and uh, started to do some good work around that centre square. Good crowd in attendance. Nearly 40,000. Jamison gets the handball to McGuinness. McGuinness close to the line. Kicks well too to the front of the goals. Knocked away there by Hodges. And no one able to collect the football there for the Adelaide Crows so a boundary throw in in the right forward pocket for the Crows Robert Walls would be reasonably satisfied with the performance by the Tigers this evening particularly the second quarter when they split the game wide open Charles worked underneath it McDermott has a snap Gasper held them up Burke pushes it forward they're just trying to work out the percentage Lee if the game stopped now, I think these two teams will be awfully close. The margin is uh, 44 points. There'll be very little between them, and they are playing for a spot in the eight tonight. Gale gets it to Bauer. So the last 15 minutes or so, pretty important. The kick to centre wing, punch away from Ellen and Harrison. And to the Crows' credit, they've kept going after well, that's time. Right. Considering their position that Richmond were in were half, at half time, they would have been really hoping to get a, you know, a big percentage burst, but it uh, hasn't quite worked out as big as they may have hoped at half time. Rodman foot pushes forward, Gale. Crows with numbers, though they all went to ground. McDermott has battled well in the last part of the game as he come on. Hart's kick inside the 50. Pittman just pushed off it by Charles. His handball to Michael Gale, who just loves this situation where he can run away and then kick the ball hard to set a half forward. Holland and Chalmers. Broderick. Still Broderick. Concedes a lot of ground. Back to Daffy. Back to Gale. Outside 50. Chips inside. Rashudo. And Lee, symbolically, that was a pretty important play by the Crows. They were able to push the ball from about 30 metres to 60 and then win it in the end. It didn't happen in the first yeah, half. The pressurising of the play with the ball uh, has been uh, a bit better as the game's gone on and uh, Richmond had to earn possessions a little more. Well, Rusciuto in a little bit of trouble there. He took the mark and uh, perhaps winded himself a little bit, but uh, just recovering behind play, attendance uh, from the trainers. He was forced to give the hand pass away. The Crows eventually getting the ball down close to their right half forward area. Out of sight of the ground. 18-11 to 12-3. 44 points is the margin in favour of the Tigers. Bauer able to gather and get his right foot to it. Kick it to a vacant centre area. The race is on here. Rusciuto. 
But Daffy is there for Richmond. The kick not all that effective. And Allen will tidy up from behind for Adelaide. He'll kick the ball into their forward half. And a mark will be taken. No. Mopra couldn't gather it. In with McLeod and Bond and Bauer. Bauer dragged to the ground there by Hodges. Well played. A little kick by Gasper was important. Goes after it again, but he's beaten for it on this occasion by Jamie Tate. He's happy to see it over for a boundary throw in about 65 metres from the Crows goal. Richmond lead 18-11 to 12 goals three. Eight and a half minutes left in the final quarter. Gail and Robin McGuinness to Big Lee under pressure straight to the line out of play. Richmond fans wanting a deliver but uh, Big Lee had little alternative there. Nine kicks and eight handballs that uh, struggled. He's tried but uh, not much has happened when he's got the footy tonight. Doesn't look 100% fit, he's looked a bit proppy. One of the big improvers for Richmond is Prescott. He's kicked his centre wing. Rusciuto gets a reasonable bounce inside to Bond. Now moving. Good kick to McDermott. Must be enjoying the second half. Robin goes to him. He kicks it out in front. Gets him. Modra goes now. Robin too late. Decides to kick to Hodges at full forward. Outnumbered. Roving Bond just dropped it. Modra couldn't quite do a specky. Gasper held him up. Broderick's handball was terrific to Prescott. To Bond, to Rogers. Rogers away at halfback, kicks the ball to centre wing. Harrison and Ellen. Good mark in the front by Harrison. Now Richmond are on top of Adelaide at the game stop now by 0 0.089 of a percent. That's how close it is. There's a point or two either way. So who will get the better of the last six or seven minutes? Bond straight back to Campbell. This will help. Campbell floating, floating, floating. Richardson pushing and not holding. And I think Smart's going to get a free kick. So no score. Nigel Smart's free kick against Matthew Richardson. So 18 12 to 12 3. So who will be in the eight at the end of the night? Crows have been there all year. I think 10 weeks' time is when we're all interested, Bruce. Absolutely. <laughs> but you've got to look for something, Lee. I'm, I'm trying like mad. Seven minutes to go. Take it away, Robbo. <laughs> well, Daffy not able to break clear. Allen, a good tackle. Lip tack underneath the uh, Ben Moore tackle. And just to put that score line the correct, I think that scoreboard did take that behind when it was uh, rushed over. And it's gone back to... 18-11 to 12-3. It'll soon be fixed up because Broderick may kick a score. He won't. Nigel Smart to chop it off. Matthew Richardson chasing. Ball close to the boundary line. Ben Hart gathers. Prescott. Didn't uh, keep the ball in play, so the boundary umpire will throw it in. Adelaide bench. Andrew Jones just uh, jogging a little gingerly around the boundary line. Six minutes left in the game. Still a 44-point advantage. Campbell over the top. Daffy. The free kick is going to the close to be taken by McGuinness for a throw. McGuinness's wasn't a throw. It was a hand pass effective to Liptak. In turn, Rusciuto. Then Pittman. Back to Rusciuto. Off his left foot. The kick bounces awkwardly. Over the top of the player's head at half forward. Well done by Collins. Gets it back to McLeod. McLeod to full forward. Gasper strong. Very, very strong and determined. Daffy. In a bit of strife there is Rogers, but he's able to control the football reasonably well. Gets the kick to half forward. Gathered by Young Holland. In turn Gale. Strong again at the football. The attack was good. The kick was okay. Across the half forward line looking for more. Tap clear by Bond. Well done by Young Moore on Connell. Keeps it in. Broderick. Miranda. Miranda's snapshot misses by the whole margin. And he's out of bounds on the full. So the free kick will be taken for the Crows in their left back pocket. As Mark Miranda gathers himself. The free kick taken by Shane Allen. Costa Bickley in the other pocket. Now Rusciuto running for him. So is Chalmers. Straight into the man on the mark, Miranda. Gale gets a second go. Back to Miranda. Tries a tricky check side out. Oh, Bob missed it. Ellen concedes a behind. 
Oh, I'm not saying anything. He's in front now. He's in the eight. Leo, <laughs> I don't care. The important thing is what happens in 10 weeks' time. 18 12 to 20 to 12 3. 120 to 75. Gee, he could be facetious. He's a gunny. Bond away. If he didn't have such a reputation, Leo would thump you. <laughs> Jamison. Holland. Miranda. Short to Gale. Richmond getting the better of it late in the game. Gale a long way from goal. Chips in short over Richardson's head. There's some tired players now to Bond. Bond, did he keep it in? Yes, but only as far as Gale, so it's a pretty poor effort. And straight back to Richardson. He Troy Bond. I think Michael Gale could believe it. Kick for Richardson. Not good disposal by Bond. He really reacts terribly quickly, Matthew Richardson. When there's a turnover up the field, he really reacts quickly to get to usable space and uh, dropped uh, smart off by 20 metres doing that. He's kicked terrifically well tonight. Five goals for Richardson. He hasn't dominated Lee, but he's yeah. been good. Hasn't and, and I think it's a sign of just what his talent is. He's had what ten kicks, eight marks, and kicked five goals, but had what you'd call a fairly average sort of night. Done some good things, but uh, I suppose when you know really good players, uh, and I think Richard uh, qualifies for that now. You uh, judge them on their own standards. Nineteen twelve to twelve three. And Matthew Richardson now 49 goals for the year. McGuinness runs away from the centre and kicks straight towards the goal square. High leap by uh, Modra at the back. Hodges has kicked his fourth goal. So Scott Hodges had been fairly satisfied. McGuinness has been a good leader. He's battled very, very hard. Hodges fourth goal out of 13. A reasonable contribution. I suppose this full forward line depends how you want to look at it. If uh, Hodges and Mod have kicked seven goals between them, that sounds pretty good. But if you look at it, they've had eight possessions between them. That doesn't sound so good. So uh, certainly their uh, percentage conversions have been great. 13 3 the Crows, nine goals after half time. 19 12 Richmond. Gale with pace. So oh, well done to Bond. To Daffy, he'll kick this, you'd reckon. No, he couldn't get the hook on it. He ran out wide to hook it back. It didn't work that I've got a feeling there's a patch of grass about centre-half forward down there where they've put new turf in. And every time players go through, it seems a lot softer. They have trouble really getting their firm footing uh, at that uh, part of the ground where Daffy kicked the ball from. Neil Curley, do you think Adelaide have earned a bit of respect in the second half? Well, after being completely outclassed in the first half, at least they have fought back. And you now, given the coaching staff and, the, and everybody in South Australia, you know, a little bit of hope. And uh, they have really worked hard in the second half. It's been good to watch. Harrison chips away, gets to Charles. Yes, yeah, since uh, half time, Adelaide's kicked 9 2 to 6 goals 5. Charles, in all fair, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, Charles given Pittman a bit of his own medicine. Uh, Pittman got a couple of kicks inside the 50 metre arc, pushing forward, and now Charles has done that down Richmond's end. See if he can kick the goal, Charles. 11 kicks and five handballs for Justin Charles. Like a number of players these days, he goes a long, long way back on his mark. He'd be 30 metres away from his man. Now he stops and props, he's getting a bit closer. He's going to kick from about 48, 47 metres. Just hooking and hitting the post. Bad luck. Kicked it pretty well. So Richmond 19-14, Adelaide 13-3. Brett Chalmers, he's had plenty of work to do. Two minutes left, Chalmers goes straight down the ground. A good long kick, nearly to the centre. Rashudo tried to get it to Connell. Tackled by Daffy. Ball spills for McGuinness. He's well tackled by Harrison, who gets a pat of uh, congratulations from Chris Bond. And it is it tackles like that that certainly give some inspiration to the uh, players around that area. 
Charles, that could have nearly been deemed as a free kick. Rashido pushed off the ball by Campbell. Ball spills for Michael Gale. He's had quite a lot of possessions in the second half. Gaffey, close to the line, shrugs the tackle and then kicks. Very ordinarily. Out of bounds on the full. Nick Gaffey's kicked three goals, four. And a couple of those uh, four behinds that he did kick could quite easily have been goals. Matthew Richardson with five goals as Richmond's leading goal kicker. Nick Daffy with three, his second. Campbell with two, Broderick with two, and Ben Moore has kicked two goals for Richmond. And I think uh, Daffy played. If you play essentially as a permanent forward and you get 20 plus possessions, that's a very good game. Nigel Smart to kick it back for Adelaide. Under two minutes left. It'll land at half back completely bamboozling all players in that area Campbell Harrison goes in after it fiercely again kicked out by Robin McDermott McGuinness hand pass was alright but by McDermott found Hart Hart's kick is a good one to Collins excellent play by Adelaide Collins is a promising young recruit the 19 year old the only rookie out there for Adelaide tonight kicked a couple of goals against West Coast in the first half inside the last minute of this match so Collins who came off with uh, a cut eye in the first half of the game kicks from uh, 45 metres out just off the side of the boot and behind Gasper to kick it in I'm frightened to mention it Lee but uh, it's going to be really close at the end of the night <laughs> <laughs> it's inside 1% I can tell you but I, I'll, I'll leave it alone. Long to set a wing. Force forward by uh, Collins again. I might be a little facetious about it, Bruce, but I can tell you these players, they'd still rather be eighth after tonight than ninth. I can tell you that. Well, a month ago, Richmond was ninth and Adelaide was second. Yes. And Richmond lost their next two games, and now they could overtake them. So yeah. poor old Adelaide have lost four straight. They've really uh, had their season uh, turned around for them the wrong way. But they've done alright in the second half. Well done, Ben Hunt. Very well done. Should have kicked the goal in the end. Looked at McLeod. No, they can't get it. Well, maybe Ben Hunt. And there's the sale. I just wonder who is in the air tonight. Six points the margin. 
Collingwood at the MCG. They've got, and the news tonight is that Richmond is in the eight by 0.125%. The Tigers are in the eight tonight. That's what they're playing for here. It's 1.25%. So Richmond in, Adelaide out. Great atmosphere here as the two clubs and their players leave the arena. They're going to be hard to get out of it too now, Lee, Richmond. Yes, I think there's a lot of people would be thinking that if, if Richmond are eight tonight, that maybe the final eight might change. Uh, it's going to take a big effort for the Crows from this point onwards, I think, to, uh, to get back in. And below that, really, the sides have looked like they're struggling a bit. Well, St Kilda have got to play West Coast this weekend. Uh, Sydney look like they'll beat Footscray, which will keep Footscray down. And Collingwood look unlikely to beat Carlton. So they wonder whether the side that yeah. uh, might only be a couple of points out of it if, uh, according to form, and they uh, you know, beat Fitzroy tomorrow. So the Tigers go inside. And uh, we'll take the song now. They've heard it uh, out there on the ground as they bond again as they did it three quarter time. Terrific effort tonight, and uh, well done as far as Adelaide's concerned after half time. It was 19 14 to 13 4. Welcome back to Talking Footy. As I said uh, when we left Ross Oakley, our guest tonight, Robert Walls, coach of the Richmond Footy Club. Robert, welcome. As you were in here last year as coach of Brisbane, I was in Gothenburg at the time. And it's great to have a coach that's actually won a game sitting in that seat. <laughs> we haven't had much luck the last few weeks, have we, uh, boys? <laughs> How are you, Robert? It was, a, it was a big game for you, wasn't it, with the, with the Saints? It was a, almost one of those make-or-break season matches. It was, Bruce. It, uh, we'd had three losses in a row, and it was important to get a win, and uh, St Kilda were in the same position. It was a very hard game. And uh, I was just really happy that our boys played four tough quarters. We won each quarter, won the game. And uh, I feel that the week before against Carlton, we started to play some good football. So I think we're on the way. Look, we'll clear a couple of things up. But before we uh, talk about your game specifically, the reports tonight, the results, Glenn Archer cleared and Lazar Vidovic out for three weeks uh, for striking Mark Marinder in that game at the MCG. And let's have a look at the ladder, because for the first time in 1996, Carlton is on top. They were mighty hard to displace last year when they hit uh, top spot after the halfway mark. And the big movers of the last couple of weeks really have been the fact that Sydney have only lost one game in the last nine. And Essendon have won five straight and West Coast has won six straight. So Richmond tightening it on Adelaide. And if we have a look at last year in round 11, which is the halfway point, the two teams that fell out of the eight were Fremantle and Adelaide. And the two that actually made the finals were well down at this stage, Brisbane and Footscray, both with four and seven, and both were able to make a late dash, particularly Brisbane, and make the finals. Robert, you mentioned the, uh, the Carlton game before. Your son David's at Carlton. I believe there were some fun and games in the Walls household in the week leading up to the Carlton-Richmond game, were there? Oh, he, uh, he was hanging around a bit through that week as I was scratching teams out and he was looking <laughs> over the shoulder to try and have a look what was going on. But uh, no, he's, he's at Carlton. He's played, he played his first full game in the reserves last week. He's coming back after a knee reconstruction. So it's been a very gradual return. But uh, they've looked after him well and uh, he's young. It's all in front of him. He's doing the apprenticeship and uh, I'm just so happy he's got that chance. Bad news for his mate Stephen Lawrence? Yes, yeah, some bad news yesterday, uh, Mike. Steve Lawrence, uh, Brisbane Bears player. He and David had their knees done the same day and did their rehab together. And Steve played with Southport in the QAFL two weeks ago, his first game back. And uh, he played on the weekend and unfortunately it looks like he's done his knee again. So mm. we're all pretty saddened about that. How important is intimate knowledge? Uh, Mike was talking uh, about Carlton and your son there, but your effort against Brisbane this year. And I think of Rodney Ede on the weekend against Dennis Pagan's team and how successful he was. 
Oh, I've got no doubt that it does help Bruce and and even Carlton with their win over Brisbane, uh, Carlton's reserves coach is, is Wayne Britton who was on the coaching panel with Brisbane for the past couple of years and I'm sure that he would have passed on a lot of information to David Parkin. So uh, I don't think you can get enough and I'm sure that uh, the knowledge that you have of players who you've coached over the years, well, if you can pass that on to your, to your current team, mm -hmm. uh, it certainly does help. A lot of preparation goes into it now. Big story on the weekend uh, concerning the Crows and their lack of form in, uh, in Melbourne. They led by 39 points. The Adelaide Advertiser today were pretty savage. It's time for players to repay debts. Uh, they question Mark Robert Shaw's situation. Mick Noonan and uh, Malcolm Blight were mentioned in dispatches. Um, and super schools give way to old habits. Malcolm, are you interested at all? Oh. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes, Bruce. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not. I mean, they're still in the eight. If, you know, it wasn't a bad result. I mean, they ended up getting beaten. Uh, they are still in the eight, and there's still 11 games to go. I mean, I, I think that's sometimes self-defeating for the team, isn't it? I mean, it, you know, it's the one team town at the moment. You prefer not to see that happen right now, to be honest. Is it reasonable for people to expect a coach to be able to change a culture in, in six months? I mean, the culture of going on the road and winning football matches? Well, I suppose it has been a nemesis, hasn't it? Yeah, I know it exists, but I mean, is it reasonable? To, is it Robert Shaw's domain totally? Obviously, he takes the final can. I mean, that's, that's obvious as being coached, but I mean, it does take time. I mean, he, I, I'll bet he tried something on the weekend. I've got no doubt he did. I think they sprayed some lotion on the, on the Guernseys as they ran out, and they obviously started with... Robert, would you approach Adelaide differently, playing them in Melbourne? in your matchups and the way you'll attack them on Friday night as to how you would be if you were playing the game at Football Park? I think it's, uh, I think it's really important that if you play them in Melbourne that you get off to a good start. Uh, so you put the, uh, the seeds of doubt in early. I think that's vital that you get off to a good start. And I think that uh, with Adelaide you probably look at their top four or five players and, and really focus in on them and make sure that they don't have good starts to the game because I think they've got four or five players who mean a, a heck of a lot to them. There's a lot of conjecture and you'd be painfully aware of it of the change in, in style between John Northey and Robert Walls. Did you, do you subscribe to that? I mean is the popular theory that Walls is a tactician, Northey the motivator? I mean is there any credence in that? I think there, there is, Mike. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of respect for John Northey. I think John, as, a, as an opposition coach over the last, what, 10 or more years, uh, he's, he's been a coach who I've always respected and I think John has the ability to get teams really fired up and you know that they'll come out and it's going to be a very hard first quarter because they really do fire up. So I've got no doubt that that is, uh, is one of you know, John's greatest assets. Um, on the other side of the coin, you know, as a tactician, a strategist, uh, I'm not quite sure about John's strengths and weaknesses there. Um, but you know, I think you've got to be yourself, and uh, I certainly can get fired up at probably nowhere near as much as John did. Um, but at the same time, you know, as a, as a coach, we put a lot of effort into our planning and preparation. And I, as a coach, I believe that 90% of your work is done um, from the Sunday through to the Friday and then 10% you just top it off and really that's the player's day. Mm -hmm. Would you prefer not to have it so personal though? I mean we can just gauge his performance at Brisbane and your performance at Richmond so clearly because he was there and you were there. I mean Malcolm copped it a bit with Gary Ayres but Malcolm wasn't involved, Lee Matthews a bit with Tony Shaw. But your measurement and John's can be quite precise this season. It's almost like it is personal, isn't it? Well, I in our assessments. Yeah, I guess, I guess it is, uh, but that's, you know, that's part and parcel of it. Um, I, I went through that ten years ago when David Parkin and I swapped yeah. jobs yeah. And, yeah. and players, yeah. so that happens. But really, I think in fairness to everybody, it shouldn't be measured over half a season or even one season. I think, you know, look back in three years' time and, and then make the decision. Nick Daffy, do you think he should have got that uh, double goal on the weekend? <laughs> it came at a vital stage, Robert, didn't it? It did. Um, you know, I was a fair way from it, but looking at it on the tape, I, I think he was probably a bit lucky to be given the second shot for goal because we've all seen probably a lot worse than that uh, go unnoticed. It's, it's been amazing. I mean, we've seen a few of these this year. I mean, they really have been soft, it? It, it? it really is annoying. All you ask for is consistency from umpires, and uh, I'll, I shall say no more. <laughs> You've had a meeting with David Levins this year, though, haven't you? I have. I won't be having any more. Didn't go all that well, did it? Well, as I said, it's best not to say anything, Mike. Um, you know, <coughs> I think anybody who's watched football this year would say that the interpretation has swung around 
180 degrees mm, mm. from how it started. I agree with that. And I don't think any football fans, coaches or players want that. Well, Nick Place spoke to David Levins today, uh, the uh, umpire's coach, about uh, this uh, situation this year where we've had at least three two-goal uh, performances, Jeff Farmer last weekend and Mickey McGuan before that, and then Nick Daffin, this was his reply. I don't know that's coincidental. As you say, there have been three this year. Uh, it's a law of the game. I'm not so sure about the players and the footy community's understanding of the law, but it's certainly there. And I think importantly, though, it does, it does mean that a player can't get a free hit, so to speak. If we don't have a penalty for it, there is a penalty, there needs to be a penalty. Otherwise, it's a free hit. If that had occurred on the wing, halfback flank, wherever, it would be a free after disposal up the ground. In the goal square, the penalty is another kick. Shaking your head, Malcolm. Well, Don't agree? It's not a free hit. I mean, those three, having watched them all, they were just so soft. It wasn't a free hit at no, all. That's the issue. I think, in principle, I thought he made plenty of sense then, but... But Maybe it they're imposing hit. it. No, yeah, well, they're how, imposing I mean, how on. Can you, on how, uh, can you, how can you call yeah, that? No, I agree with that. But no, I think what not. he's saying is that we should have a rule to protect the bloke oh, who I, may have just kicked the goal and then been buried. Well, I, I don't. The rules there is quite right. But I mean, I would, as I said, I think the term "hit" not right. I mean, they were very soft pushes mm. after the mm. after the ball was kicked. Another term in football these days is designated kicker. We saw some Kilda against you, Robert, have all sorts of problems on the weekend. Uh, you were able to score two goals uh, from mistakes at the back. Well, we'd watched St Kilda on tape and uh, we knew that Peckett in particular kicks short. He goes for the short option and uh, our players, as you can see here, they really did pressure and force the error. They kept the ball alive and it's come out to Nick and he's been able to kick a goal and they are just great goals for a team to kick because you just break the spirit of the opposition. The other kick in here, that's gone to Young and Young was a target for a lot of their kick-ins and whilst we set up a zone, we had a player who sat on Young, he didn't go and take his own spot. And look, it worked that time, uh, there are plenty of times it doesn't, but uh, Young had received a lot of their kick-ins in previous weeks. It's costly for you, Malcolm, in 1994, the short one, with, that, with Hinkley uh, yeah, and then O'Reilly against West Coast. a couple in the grand second quarter, yeah. At, at vital times, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, it was. I mean, it's one of those things, I suppose you actually set it up, to, you know, to practice at it, but obviously the Eagles had uh, practiced a fair bit as well. And, uh, you know, he's read it beautifully. Evan started to go as Hinkley kicked. This was a vital time, too, in the game, as we, as we all know. And uh, it really does break the spirit of the side, as Robert mentioned. Once again, the same player read it beautifully. So, obviously, they've done their work on it, and we just didn't quite get the kick right. Are Carlton the best at bringing it out, do you think? Well, I think they are. Uh, Silvani tends to go short and then follow up and uh, Christo goes long and Christo is such a long kick. He can hit a target over 60 metres which is pretty special. Um, but I think Carlton's strength as much as anything, they've got six or eight players with 150 or more games experience who've played together, know each other inside out. and. I guess when you play Carlton uh, and you look at their defence, you try to separate their defence as much as you can and not have them close to each other where they read each other so well. And that's easier said than done. But uh, I just think that Carlton's going along terrifically well. We played them two weeks ago and I thought that they were, you know, probably going on about six cylinders, not the mm, eight. Mm. And uh, we played pretty well, but they were still able to get away when the game was level with three minutes to go. Robert, interesting, all those kicks there <coughs> that we've seen, the four of them, actually we kick short kicks back to the middle. Carlton to, do tend to kick it a bit wider, don't they? Most sides will kick it wider. Much yeah. harder to kick a goal. That's right. Well, if you make a mistake, uh, the chances are you won't get a goal yeah. kicked back on you. Just saying with Bluey, McKenna and Shannon Grant, both the same. I mean, they're able to pinpoint a target two yards in from the boundary, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, Sydney, yeah, they had uh, Scotty Doreen up until he was injured mm. and and now the, the young fella uh, kicking in for them, Grant, and mm. uh, if you've got a kick kicker who can just hit the target, kick it, you know, sharp and low, mm. uh, it's a real asset and teams are putting in hours and hours of practice mm. now on getting their kick-ins right and I think Collingwood, uh, particularly early in the year, were just fantastic mm. with the plays that they had. Do you take much notice of what happens in the, the huddle in the opposition at quarter time? Did you spot what happened uh, with uh, Rod Keogh and Darrell Wakeman on, no, I on Saturday? Have a look at this. Got fright, didn't he? We've looked back at the tape and we couldn't find any reason for it. Well, I'd be disappointed if two of my players did that. Uh, it's OK to be angry and annoyed with a teammate, but you don't let 40,000 people see it. He looks like he squared it up, though, didn't he? So he Wakeman on his head, yeah. Mm. 
probably mm. just uh, leaves a bit of taste there, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with Robert there. I, I think I think you're in, you know, your teammates, and that's the whole mm. idea. You try and help each other, not hinder mm. each other. I think we're all thrilled to bits that uh, Paul Ruse played a beauty in his 300th game. What a way to uh, to celebrate uh, such a milestone! Sydney winning by plenty, and Ruse getting a heap of kicks. Monday's experts. <laughs> Always know what's cooking. Our guest tonight is Robert Walls, uh, coach of the Richmond Footy Club, who play Adelaide this week and at the moment are just one game out of the top eight. Played the yeah. previous week. Maybe. Is Matthew Richardson a fair analogy for you, Robert, in, in the in the in the attention that Corey's been getting this season? And Matthew's obviously a huge star at your club. Probably at a fairly similar stage in his career in terms of games played and where he's at. Well, that's that's right. Uh, I think that you know McKern has played less than 60 games, and and Rich has just played his 50th a couple of weeks back. So their form will fluctuate up and down to a, to a, a lot larger extent than say a, a Carey's, and they're still doing doing the apprenticeship, but. Uh, uh, both of them are terrific players and uh, you know, Richo, I think the best is, is certainly yet to come and that's pretty exciting. Robert, you, uh, do you ever talk to him about his tendency to just fly for anything? Does that worry you that he just takes off from anywhere and, and puts himself in any contest? No, not at all, Mike. Uh, I think that's, that's his natural flair and style and you've just got to let him do that. Um, I think once we try to harness that we could get into to trouble. So um, you know, the opposition would worry about him going for marks at all angles and even if he collides with one of our players we don't mind that too much mm. because his intent is the ball and we've just got to let him go that way. What's your experience Malcolm and also to you Robert, uh, if Corey McKernan reads that you probably, um, I'm not sure how he'd re react. You'd imagine he'd be disappointed. Does the coach normally go and talk to a player after something like that becomes public? Well, the only thing is, I think you'd have to ask Dennis Pagan. I'm not saying that he, he didn't smuggle. Mm. Yeah. It's all part of the learning process. Uh, you know, your Schimmelbush and Duels and Lee Matthews, their, their worst games only fell to a 6 or 7 out of 10. The young kids, they'll drop to a, a 1 or 2 or 3 mm. out of 10 and you've just got to let them know that you're not going to have great games all the time and when you have a bad one, you can't let it be a terrible game. Mm. Gee, Sydney were a big story on the weekend, weren't they? A, a huge performance. For that matter. Yeah, it's good. And, uh, yeah, this is terrific very, stuff. Very unselfish, this, isn't it? I'm going to give me a goal for the full forward. On I think he thinks 100. he owes blokes like Grant and Maxfield, maybe. I mean, there's been good service so far this year. Perhaps given one back occasionally. And within about a minute and a half, this happens. And does repay it. Well, the kid, had, the kid had rather give it to Tony than kick it himself, because mm. he'd have so much respect for Tony that he, he'd feel good giving it mm. to the big fella. What about that presence? I mean, we saw a situation where Mickey Martin was probably in a position to take a mark and, and punched away here and Sydney were able to score a goal. I think that's refer what they call referred pressure. Yeah, I get a feeling of what might have been yeah. coming. And know that there's a locket factor, isn't there? In oh, that, there's in that no area doubt. Of the ground. There's yeah. no and, doubt. And, and in, all, yeah, in all fairness, though, I mean, if you think that's on, to punch it away like that, it's probably the right decision. Rather than put up one hand or duck your head or something like that. I mean, it was a pretty aggressive punch. Mm. If he thought that Lockett had the drop on him, obviously it, it turned out to be a goal though. Yeah, sure. Mickey, Mickey wouldn't yeah. have been happy with the result. No. Kerry kicked an unbelievable goal, didn't he, on, on the weekend? Uh, just a, it's just amazing. The skills of these blokes are amazing. I mean, to be able to, at that angle to do that is just fantastic. And uh, Robert was telling us before about a story about Daryl White and his ball control with, from your time in Brisbane. Well, when we saw that earlier, um, it just reminded me, Daryl, uh, he would always have a, a football or a basketball in his hands and uh, there was one night he was out there just kicking the ball on his foot um, successive kicks up and down up and down and he got to around about 35 one night which you want to try it if you it's get amazing, past yeah. five you'll be proud of yourself and he got 35 and that was the year that Nathan Buckley was playing with the Bears and uh, and Buckley he also you know prided himself on his skills and four or five nights later Buckley had got it over 40 but uh, yeah they've just got super talents mm -hmm. these young blokes Criswell made a blue. Um, that, that, this Good stuff, <laughs> isn't it? That is great. <laughs> Fantastic. We've talked a lot about Dunstall, uh, Robert. I'd be interested in, in your thoughts on him. He seems to be rejuvenated. He's kicked 24 goals in his last four matches and Hawthorne have won three of those four. Yes, uh, look, I, I'm, I think Jason Dunstall's a, a great player, has been for a long while. I watched him very closely in 1990, saw Hawthorne play a lot. 
and he very rarely moved from the goal square except when the lead was on and I would say that uh, four out of five Dunstall marks are taken without any opposition player touching him. Uh, it's very rare that he takes an overhead mark in a contest so he relies a lot on his lead, his explosiveness, his timing but in particular relies on the, on the supply from the midfield and in those uh, you know, premiership years at Hawthorne he had some terrific players putting it to him and I just think that you know, the skill level of the Hawthorne players has picked up in recent weeks so the supply is better than it has been. Do you rate them, uh, Malcolm or Robert, as a chance? Hawthorne, they've got Fitzroy this week. Yeah, it, it, you can just see them probably falling a game or two short. Um, I don't think they're a 15th side now. They do appear to have some confidence back and they are sharing the ball around the midfield. Crawford's very good for them. Kapler back in the side makes a bit of a difference. So I, I think just short of it. I think uh, Ken Judge is doing a good job with them. You know, the way that they played uh, the Dockers in Perth, uh, I wish I'd have seen that about a month ago because we might have changed our game plan. Uh, he just went one-on-one -on -one wherever they went and, and closed them down. Virtually started the game with half-back flankers playing at half-forward so that he had tough uh, players on, on the uh, Chisholms and the Kickets and so on. Uh, it's a fairly simple game plan, but if everyone does it, it's effective. When Nick Place went out and asked uh, Jason Dunstall today, what's been uh, reiterating what you said, it's, it's pleasing to see a great champion in form because he really was struggling early this year. Yes, he, he did uh, a very good summer's preparation, got himself extremely fit and I think that uh, Dunstall was really keen to, to make amends for Hawthorne's disappointing mm. uh, exit from the finals last year or the final eight. Mm. Look, we'll take a break. Uh, Jeff Farmer kicked a sensational goal. Jazz, it was just tight, hard. And a four-goal margin was big, but it happened in about five minutes of footy. And I thought they were very competitive, the Bears, but, but I still do like Carlton. I mean, I think everyone does. Mm. How did you assess their performances, Robert? Did you have a look at it? I didn't see much of it, Bruce, no. Uh, I, I, I read David Parkin's comments. He was happy that the ground was sloppy and, and wet, mm. and uh, I'm sure that the Bears would have liked to have had a firm track and, and warmer conditions to take the most of the home ground advantage. Do you think the umpiring made any difference, Malcolm? There were a couple of decisions, one when Champion may or may not have played on and Carlton Gold, and the one with Lappin that everyone's been talking about. Uh, I thought Champion played on, by the way. Um, to there Because he, he realised he had nowhere to go, and so he just conceded and ran over the line and didn't try and fake anything. Actually, one of the tricks is, uh, is, is you actually stay bent over. Yeah. You, you, you look as though you're still you're closer <laughs> to the line than what you really are. By coming up early, the umpire gets a bit of a look at it. So you actually stay down. I think he paid for his honesty lap and I think there was a tough call on him and then I heard one of the uh, former umpires on TV saying that he should have uh, cradled the ball over the line. Well, gee, the kid's uh, an honest young yeah. player mm. who's, who's read the play, got to the ball first and ran out of options and uh, he's been penalised too severely. The other point about that, how would it have happened that Pierce and, and Heaver were able to just <laughs> decide that Heaver was the more appropriate bloke to kick it? Probably because it was on Heaver's right Yeah, I understand. Foot. I know the logic of it, that yeah. Pierce is a left. But there was no consult. I mean, it just happened, didn't it? Well, I suppose... We uh, saw Pierce chase him over and then Heaver take the ball. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, they're, they're the little things that uh, can help you win a game. Well, we'll have a look at that again, Mike. Because it certainly looked like Pierce was in the box seat to get the free I mean, kick. Heaver just, like, he's 30 metres away right now. Yeah. Mm. And this is if the kid stays down low. Oh, it, it wasn't too bad, just with the fence. And you look as though you're going to go, it wasn't too bad. Geez, a tough call, wasn't it? And then all of a sudden, he yeah. appears. <laughs> well, look, uh, Nick Place went out and chatted to uh, Brent today and asked him uh, how did he happen to get the kick. I might have might have run in front of Piercy and grabbed the ball. I don't know, but I ended up getting the ball, and you know, I was happy to have a have a shot because there's nobody else else to kick it to. So I thought I might as well have a shot at. Yeah, and I guess being a right footer too wasn't a bad idea. Well, yeah, it's a bit. It was, you know, for me, it was a good idea anyway. Yeah. Good on him, <laughs> and, and he kicked the goal, but it did look like Pierce should have taken it. <laughs> Lynch. Um, I thought one of his bits of footy against Silvani Saturday night late in the game was fabulous. His strength and was able to take him on physically and as an athlete. Robert, you didn't, probably didn't see a lot of him up there in terms of on the field, did you? No, the two years that, that uh, Alistair was there when I was coaching, he broke his collarbone twice in the first year. That was 94, played 11 or 12 games and then had the uh, chronic fatigue last year and only played the one game. Uh, he's a powerful athlete who relies on his strength and uh, with his illness last year he wasn't able to do much with weights and uh, he, he needs the weights and the strength work to give him confidence because he relies on the strong marks and body positioning. Uh, but it's important for the Bears that he plays well because they really did mortgage their future on him two years ago. Mm. 
What about the goal umpiring situation uh, on the weekend? We saw a couple of incidents. Well, the one in no, Cockatoo Collins kicked it, but what? It, when you look on the slow motion yeah, replay, it, it came off the other, the other foot. foot. That's yeah, right. Yeah. It wasn't his intending yeah. leg, oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. It was a bit of an accident. Yeah, it's a hard one because, mm. uh, you yeah, know, obviously two mistakes there and had the game been decided by that, there would have been, uh, you know, a big uh, outcry. But, well, we've gone for the extra field umpires, we've gone for the extra boundary umpires. Perhaps it is time to go for a, you know, I suppose there's more chance of getting it right with two up that end than one. Mm. Carlton's first goal, um, Kudafidis. Uh, Kudafidis? Have a look at this, Mike. Oh, not, to, not to disagree with it. I think Kuda's heard the whistle, right, and just bowled out of it. And Kernahan was committed to it. So I reckon you're splitting straws on that one, seriously. I think either player was probably right. From I where the umpire came, you probably saw Kuda feed his. I think either player there was entitled to yeah. take the ball. Mm. It's unusual when you're a great goal kicker. Mm. You're hoping that the other guy might take the ball because, you know, Kernahan's what, 650 goals? Well, he missed one, I reckon. He, he was 30 out and he missed by 30 the other night. Down the other but end. You're allowed, yeah. you're allowed to do that occasionally. Oh, you can happen, yeah. <laughs> you can kick helicopters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about not bouncing the ball on Saturday night? Apparently the centre pitch area wasn't bad. It was going. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, st but still the umpire has control of the game and I guess it's, it's up to you to convince him either captain, coach or Ruckman. But the covers weren't off that area until five minutes before the curtain raises, so logically it was still pretty solid. The, yeah. the gabber is a ground where it is hard to, for the umpire to bounce the ball high. Uh, it's a different grass and a very sandy surface and uh, you know, traditionally the, the ball doesn't bounce high, so in those conditions uh, they weren't going to get it up much higher than the mm. players. But as a coach, are you in a position where you can ask the umpires to bounce the ball? if you feel that the conditions are reasonable? Yes, there's, there's been times when you can, you know, you say, well, what are you going to do today? Are you going to throw it up or are you going to bounce it? And you can give them what you you know, what you would like to be. Mm. Yeah. Well, we saw an incredible thing there on, uh, on Saturday night, a marriage proposal that came good. <laughs> Almost at the end of Talking Footy on a night that Ross Oakley announced that uh, he was resigning as uh, Chief Executive Officer at the end of the season. Robert, I believe the Adelaide Press have been uh, Madly ringing your club this week because of some statement that you made as Brisbane coach late in the year trying to rev up the Crows, can you? Well, I feel something I said may come back to haunt us, Bruce. <laughs> um, just very briefly, last year with the Bears needing to have other teams lose for them to get in, um, I was a bit critical of the Crows because I wanted to stir them up to beat Melbourne in Melbourne. It worked. Which they did. <laughs> But uh, at the same time, I didn't think I'd be coaching in 1996, so uh, <laughs> I think I've opened my big mouth. Yeah. But, but the Adelaide people have to realise that was a Brisbane person speaking. <laughs> Wayne Campbell, your best and fairest winner last year, started the season slowly. In fact, you sort of ended up putting him back deep in defence. Was that to boost his confidence? And is there an explanation for that slow start? I think that Wayne uh, got a lot of treatment early and, and we also played him on ball, not on the wing. And uh, he, look, he was working very hard, but it just wasn't quite coming together. And the last three weeks he's played in the back line and uh, just given us some terrific run. His, uh, his stats have been very high and he's just set so much play up for us, so he's back in town. Where's Knights and Free at? Uh, a lot of the Richmond fans would want to know their situation. Um, Matty Knights, I think, will play within the next three or four weeks. He's getting over that ankle operation. And Tony Free had a run last week for the first time. I think Tony's still a fair way off. We're hopeful he may play before the end of the year, but uh, we're not quite sure. What are they like, trying to do with him, uh, with his cartilage? Oh, he's had a series of injections to try to uh, generate growth in the cartilage. Um, you know, there's not a lot of cartilage left there, so it's a bone-on-bone -bone situation. And uh, we're hoping to you know, generate some growth there and, and get him back on the field but uh, Tony's more long-term. Mm. Well, it's a good round this weekend. Uh, your game, absolutely vital. Do you get excited when you build up to one like this? I mean, could be the difference between making the finals and not. Oh, yes. Uh, look, it's, it's just terrific to be at the MCG and see crowds of 40, 50, 60,000 uh, screaming out the yellow and black as the team runs on the ground. I can't believe you like that. A Carlton oh. player <laughs> saying he likes that. No, I think it's marvellous. It's a great stadium and, uh, and they're really passionate supporters, the Tigers, so it's a good feeling. Opponents knows when to run off and get the ball himself. And I think they've got a very good midfielder. Matthew Richardson, of course, is pretty special.
up in the forward line. Rowan Connolly talked uh, earlier about Essendon giving away some pretty good players, but everyone does it, I suppose. Carlton had Chris yes. Bond and uh, yeah. don't have him any longer, and he's blossomed. Yeah, well, almost every side's got players that came from another club, and uh, the second chance they've had a look at themselves or got more opportunities and uh, have succeeded at their second go. And Wayne Campbell uh, moved into defence, and yes. it seems to have been something of a masterstroke. Well, I, I think so, and he's basically playing. Well, he's playing one-on-one, -on -one, all in midfield. We see Matthew Richardson doing what he, oh, he does as well as anyone, just running and jumping at the ball. I often say if uh, the ball's coming to the Richmond forward line, his opponent should be having his body against him, even if he's sitting in the front row of the stand. He just jumps from anywhere, but uh, but they play one-on-one -on -one honest football. And uh, yeah, I, I just thought the last week or two, they started to get a bit of urgency back that was really the hallmark of their uh, play last year. What did you think when Robert Wall said it might take him 12 months to really get to know his players? Well, that part might be true. To, you know, to really know how they react in all the all the situations, it probably is true that uh, Wolsey would still be uh, getting to know them a bit. Now, that was a critical piece of play. Uh, we would have seen that Andrew Jarman started about five metres from his opponent, Chris Bond, and when Bond kicked the goal from the 50 metre mark, Andrew Jarman was about 40 metres away. And that lack of chasing is the thing that really kills the Crows in the midfield. OK, we caught up with Wayne Campbell after the Tigers won their... Uh match on Friday night, most impressively against Adelaide, and talk to him firstly about the turnaround which Richmond have achieved since uh, their terrible loss at Subiaco against Fremantle. I think the, the couple of weeks before the Fremantle game were a period of about three weeks where we really played badly, and we actually hadn't done that for about probably two and a half years. We'd been beaten by sides that were better than us, but we hadn't had a period where our form was as bad as that was, so it was sort of a period where we had hit rock bottom, and uh, you know, the media were onto us and everyone was onto us, but uh, we knew we could turn it around, and I think the Carlton game was probably the start of that. We, uh, we got beaten by two goals, but by probably a a side that's you know one of the best ever to go around I suppose so since then we knew that if we kept up with our game plan and, and sort of a newish game plan I suppose being implemented by Robert uh, results had come our way the last two games have and we've sort of after the from our, after the Carlton game we set ourselves to win three in a row so we're two, two of that. Started just about favourite for the Brownlow last year the first uh, half of 96 not quite as good as 95 but in the last three rounds 33 disposals against Carlton, 22 against St Kilda, 26 against Adelaide at an average of 27, 14 kicks, 13 hand passes, 3 marks. It's all flowing back for Wayne Campbell and it all seems to be flowing back for the Tigers. And Wayne Campbell also spoke about Richmond's attempts to recapture that spirit of 95. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I suppose we were at this stage of the year we were ten and two last year, but at this stage of the year, this year we're more we're mentally fresher and physically fresher. We're really looking forward to the second half of the year. I suppose there was a lot of pressure on us because of you know the, we we're up on top and everyone was out to get us. Whereas now we're you know we're in eighth spot and we're we've got to make the ground on other sides. But it's it's a really good feeling at the club now that we we've got things rolling and we just want to keep moving on. Wayne Campbell, Richmond rolling, Adelaide shot in tatters. Well, I don't think they're completely gone. I, I wouldn't think the final eight would change from this point onwards, and it's ten weeks to go. But uh, I think the Crows have still got a uh, got an opportunity. But uh, certainly they're just looking a bit slow. I think. But I can lip read. We're going straight to the Grand Hotel. Yep, that's what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as frequently as that, though. I don't think, Tim. I wonder how they must be feeling. I was kicking it around as yeah. I prepared to put in my entry in the tipping competition for last uh, weekend and I thought now if they have a skerrick of pride in their performance yes. after the the criticism they've copped, they must produce a really big effort, and they did for about 15 minutes. Yeah, they did have a go early, I thought. I mean, the, the game was really fairly tight for that first 15 minutes, but then for the next quarter and a half, uh, Richmond just, as I said, were too quick around the midfield, and they just ran too hard, and, and they just made the Crows look very second-rate. And it's hard to think back that that same Crows team in the first month of the year, well, one game, they beat Eston by 100-odd points. So, I mean, it just very much the same players. Certainly 15 of the team were the same players, but they just were playing very differently just recently. Well, Robert Shaw with that task ten times more difficult than being coach of North Melbourne. Then a trio of teams, a game and a half off the lead, Brisbane and Sydney. Third and fourth, you wouldn't have dreamt it just 12 months ago with Geelong in fifth position. Then West Coast on 32 points, Essendon on 30, Richmond moving into the eight, ahead of Adelaide on percentage. Hawthorne now just half a game out. That with a 23-point loss to Richmond. The Tigers hit the scoreboard within the first minute. It's a dream start! Sav Rocker was still troubled by his shoulder, held to just two goals. 50 metres against Gale. 
Richmond, meantime, poured on four. First quarter goals in five minutes to take control. Bond sneaking through a beauty. More disaster for the Pies with Wright to miss the rest of the year through knee injury and Brett James reported for striking Prescott. It was the first time since 82 Collingwood have lost seven games straight. Richardson, he's done it to Melbourne. To the ladder and it's still Carlton leading the way from Geelong and now the Giant killing Swans but North can take over on top with a win over the Dockers tonight. Brisbane, Essendon, West Coast and Richmond make up the eight. Quite frankly, the thing I know is Berbikov was always with him. It was really just the bulk of Kerry that took three mm. great chess marks. He's certainly going to find out about Berbikov. He started him on Matthew Richards in his first game and he's had Kerry and he's had um, uh, Kernahan on the way through. So he's certainly getting a crash course. <laughs> three of the big ones, yeah. The reports, uh, five straight, Adelaide four straight. In fact, since St Kilda beat Collingwood that night and it was a great game on a Friday night, neither team's won a game. Mm, amazing. The Hawks have crept up, haven't they? Mm. The test is this weekend, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Suddenly we'll find yeah. out. Um, you wrote an article today, um, Malcolm. Uh, re um, Nigel Smart's effort at not going hard at uh, Wayne Campbell and, and uh, at least uh, making him make a decision when he was running towards goal, staying with Richardson. There was another incident on the weekend where Mark Bickley passed the ball to him and uh, Lee Matthews was reasonably, criti reasonably critical in his observations. He was entitled to be from the look of that, wasn't he? I mean, that would appear to me to be sort of symptomatic of. Uh, of, of the problems that, that sure he's got. Yes, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, there's times in footy, I think we all know that you have to go for the ball. And uh, I mean, he heard something. Was it a noise, a call out? I don't know, but it just doesn't look good, does it? And uh, unfortunately, I suppose we've all been guilty of that at some stage. And when you're going bad, you know, mm. it's just not great leadership from anybody to do that. Mm. I mean, it's not singling out one player. I mean, mine was more a decision thing, but gee, it, I mean, it just didn't look good to come back like Costa and Jarman. And I think you, the, the blokes are proud to play for the Adelaide Footy Club. How good were Richmond, do you think, uh, Malcolm? You, you had a look. I mean, Broderick seems to be absolutely starring. Knight still to come back in the centre square yes. and maybe kill away shortly. Yes, I actually saw him against Fitzroy too when he absolutely butchered David. Yes. Um, yeah, he's, a, he's a terrific player, isn't he? I, that, it was just so casual, wasn't it? When, I mean, you don't see many blokes do that. I mean, it was just a little dinky around the corner, wasn't he, it? He was very good last year, actually, and I was surprised when the finals came around that John Northey chose not to play him in the centre when he'd been so good in the home and away series. And I think he got a bit scared about Waverley and about his lack of pace there, but he's just such a good ball getter, Paul Broderick, isn't he? Yeah, and he's a great user of the oh, ball, he is, too. Yeah. You know, remind, he's really a younger Paul Couch. You know, pretty hard at it and with terrific skills. You made the point uh, about Fitzroy. Michael Noonan said that he is the player that has damaged Fitzroy the most this year. Yeah. Uh, Broderick. As a single comment mm. about a single person. He's almost the, uh, that old fashioned because he's not a great athlete in the Kuta Fides mould, is he? But he's so highly skilled, mm. does everything by the textbook, so neat. And he doesn't waste one of them, does he? No. He's very good. Daffy. Remember when Michael Malthouse talked to us about Daffy, yeah. saying how important he was? When they lost their three in a row recently, he kicked one in those three matches in total. He's kicked eight in the last two weeks, and he gets so many possessions when he's on song. He was great on uh, Friday night. He's hard, he's a good kick, he's very competitive. He read this beautifully. It's a Kevin Bartlett style, yeah. isn't it? That? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it's just great reading. I mean, it was a punch, right-handed punch, and the other right-handed punch, a run to the middle of the ground, and it just fell beautifully. Mm. I mean, but if you keep running to that spot, you'll eventually get some, and I think that's the key to it, isn't it? And he's such an enthusiastic player. We've talked about emotion. What about the send-off that Richmond got at half-time? I mean, David, I was quite moved by it. They led 13-8 to 4-1. It was if, as if they'd won a major final. It was only half-time. Oh, look, I think there was, what, 21 scoring shots to 5, as you see there, and I think that... For some reason, just being here for the first time in a winter, the Richmond supporters, that word or that phrase, Michael, that come out of the closet, yeah. is absolutely spot on. And I think their support at the ground is sensational. That's the most rousing of all the theme songs these days, isn't it? I mean, particularly when they do the yellow and black refrain, it's just uh, really, it must lift the team, I reckon. This is fantastic to be there. The hair was standing on the back of your neck. And Malcolm, they use the old rooms, don't they, Richmond? They, they come into the... Old changes, yep. and steeped in tradition and history, yes, and all, yes. the players all, names. all the All the colours up and the photos up on the wall. Yeah, they're going to get a big crowd, aren't they, with Collingwood? In fact, they'll probably outnumber Collingwood supporters on Friday night. They mm. seem to be outnumbering everybody. I remember in the final last year where, es where they played Essendon, who have fantastic support. There seemed to be a bigger roar when Richmond mm. kicked a goal. Mm. It was a great match that one. Let's have a look at tomorrow night's big game at the MCG between the Tigers and the Magpies.
Let's have a look now at the Tigers. One change. Kellaway back after his hamstring injury. Moore is unlucky to be omitted from the side. That uh, fixed up Adelaide by 46 points. Really, it was all over at half time. Richardson kicked five. There were ten goal kickers in all for the Tigers. Daffy kicked three. And Robert Wall said we got it moving fairly quickly. And again, there was a fair spread of goal kickers. That's a good sign. We like that. And why wouldn't he? The Magpies have lost six by an average of 35 points on the trot. Let's have a look at the Maggies. And a few changes here too. Krasiska, Rocca, Curran, Ahmet, Tony Francis and James back in the side there. So the big three, Francis and Rocca and Krasiska back. Patterson, who has to be absolutely dead stiff, Sam, to get rubbed out for a week for charging. Whew, I don't know about that. Walker's out injured with a hamstring. Pyman, Sharkey, Hotton and Liddell have been omitted from the Collingwood side, beaten by 21 points. Uh, 29 points up midway through the third quarter. Sam, your opinion of Patterson's suspension? Oh, no, I thought it was uh, very, very soft, Eddie. But I don't know how the season can get any better. It's getting better and better as we go along as Collingwood oh. keep losing. It is fantastic, Trev. They just keep losing and doesn't it make us chuckle? Well, look, I, I think, Sam, that uh, the Patterson thing, there's two ways of looking at it. You look at the video and there's absolutely no way known that the guy should have gone. But on the other hand, he's a dirty, filthy Collingwood dog and should have gone for life. <laughs> Are you in some official capacity down there? You've uh, revelled at all those emissions. You've, uh, well, not revelled. Oh, no, not, 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 but you are, there's something going on down there. You are, there's, you're more than just an idle or casual supporter. I am just a supporter of the Collingwood Football Club. Always have been and very proud to be. You, you, you don't worry about you, North Melbourne, over there. You, you know Shin before you the sides come out who's in and out. You know that before they're even... Well, I knew that Fitzroy and North Melbourne were merging before it came out too, but that doesn't matter. Boys, we'll go to a, a, a tip here now. Collingwood... 11 to 6 out of the centre in the first half, 1 to 15 in the second half. Richmond getting back to some form of last year, Ed, and I think they were too strong for Collingwood. I think with uh, Justin Charles at centre half forward, Greg Deere in a ruck, Brendan Gale in the back line, Richmond will pump Collingwood senseless. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is not a foot with you, didn't this is not a football trip, Doug. Uh, what are they doing? <laughs> They will beat him by a few goals. Uh, so. yeah, I'm going to stick with Richmond as well, Ed, unfortunately. Yes, well, what do you I, reckon? Oh, well, no bets this week, I hope. No bets this week, Richmond easily. But um, you're right about out of the centre there. They uh, did fall away. That was what was their downfall mm. last week. 15-1 mm. to one in the second well, half. I reckon the Pies will get up tomorrow night. Mm. Oh, no. Back and no, we're not saying anything. I'm not no. stick, yeah, I just think Collingwood will get up. There'll be no worries about that. And well done to Tony Shaw, who had a fantastic coaching performance last week. Out coached the, the Blues, but just ran out of manpower in the end. So, oh. good things happen. Good things happen. <laughs> well, oh, off, uh, we had Hassel was off with his nose all over his face, and then we had yeah. Francis was off with blood rule, and uh, Richardson was off. There was no Ruckman no, for about Maggie. 10 minutes in the last bit of the quarter. Oh, what do you want? Oh. Don't start on that. Oh. That's the world's smallest violin, yeah. Maggie. Tell <laughs> <laughs> them, Maggie. Don't worry about that. The Magpie Army sticking with the pies, not like all these other bandwagon jumpers. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. listen to it. As, as, and that's directed especially at those Richmond sucks that we haven't seen for years. <laughs> <laughs> now they're back. Now they're back. That's for you. It's probably one that I have to thank a lot for getting me to Carlton. Now, how do you get along at Carlton as you? and Matthew Richardson share a flat. Now, who gets the mirror first and who pinches a headband? <laughs> um, well, Richo gets, gets a lot. <laughs> he, he, he gets bigger. everything. Yeah, he's, he's bigger than me, so... And he's, he's probably a little bit quicker too, which is uh, quite amazing for a guy who's six foot five to be as quick as him, but... No, no there's, not a, there's not much time spent in front of the mirror. Well, when you're asleep, he told me he sneaks in and pinches all Parkins' notes. No, no, I, um, I actually lock Parkins' notes up in my locker at training, so Richo can't get hold of them. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you wouldn't fit your boots in. <laughs> yeah, Parkins' notes. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's no just just one thing, I mean... This is the big game tonight between Collingwood and Richmond at the MCG. They've oh. played each other eight times in the 90s for four wins each. Collingwood winning by an average of 46 points, Richmond by 47. Oh. And last time the met was round 21 last year at the MCG when Richmond 14-25 beat Collingwood 7-13. And that's a scoreline that's all too common for Collingwood recently, just kicking those low scores. But the Tigers, they are back in town in a big way. And uh, the fellow Campbell kicking the ball down there is one of the reasons why they're going well, because he's found some of his 1995 form. And 
Paul Broderick's also been in pretty good form he's, for them, hasn't he? He's been absolutely fantastic. He, he started off, I think, here pretty quietly. Campbell's here on. Here is Broderick, here now. Yes. Little right foot off. Over to uh, Richo. Over the top. Very unselfish play. To number 16. Holland. Holland. Is wrong. Holland. Holland. Oh. Is that Ben Holland, is it? Mm. 16. Good young player too. I mean, when you look at the uh, Richmond setup, th their ability to have such tools like Benny Gale and Richardson and Charles and Holland up forward, and you look at the poor old Collingwood defence. Yeah. Gee, their defence looks very, very brittle, and mm. you just couldn't see Collingwood's defence being able to hold that tall, mobile, high-marking forward line of Richmond. I think they have a, re a real dip like last week. But no, they, just, they just haven't got the talent they to uh, go through and, and win a match off calibre. No. But, but, but last week, uh, talking about Collingwood, you, you expected Carlton to. Be Beat Collingwood by 10 or 12 goals, Ron. Mel and I thought that Carlton would struggle against we, Collingwood. Yeah, we thought it would be a battle. <laughs> I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> I think you're right. We, <laughs> we, we thought you might forget that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing that Shorey's done with Collingwood is against the Eagles, their first half, his tactics were terrific and they just ran out of talent. And then last week again, they ran out of a couple of injuries, but they ran out of talent at the end of the game. They really did take it up to Carlton, didn't they? I, mean, I think the one thing with this coach, he's prepared to do something different. And, and you know, I mean, Evan Parkin admitted that, um, you know, I mean, he's, he's very brave in, in some of the positional moves and different things he does do with the team. And then, look, they've got Chris Isco, uh, Rocker, uh, Francis back this week. Three very, very important oh, players for them. Oh, terrific for oh, look, I, I wouldn't write them off. Like, they're a very important match for both teams this exactly. week. Real important in the context of their, their, where they're going to finish this I year. think one of the things that's been good for Richmond in the last month is players like Prescott, and everybody raved about Broderick's first half last week, but I think Prescott had one less possession. Mm. And it's a little, the average player that's lifted his rating that's helped uh, Richmond overcome their problems of earlier in the year. Prescott uh, tape. Yeah, Tape, who, who, Tape's had a very ordinary year, but he came, he turned the corner yeah, there yes. again. So Rogers has been playing pretty. Bond the last week got Callaway's back, back in. He's Callaway's a very good player. Yeah. Charles has been good for you. Terrific. He has. And I love, it, he? I love yeah. the way Charles, an example of all young players, isn't he? How nice he gets a mark, he's on the ground, he gets up quick, he yeah, sprints he back and then plays on again. It's 20 yards every, every time he gave. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. another fellow that's been going very well for them in the last couple of weeks, and I think particularly last Friday night, is uh, Nick Daffy. Mm. Yeah, he was one of those that was a star last year.